Events in progress. Perfect. Well, welcome everybody. Today is the September meeting of the 20, September 27th, 2021 meeting of the Battery Park City uh, Committee meeting and of CB1. Um, my name is Justine Cuccia. My co chair is Kathy Gupta, and she is just on here now. Perfect. Um, other members of our committee are in the order they show up on my screen Eric Flores, Betty Kay, Bob Schneck. Jeff Galloway, Jimmy Sung, uh, Kathy Gupta again, Robin Forrest is a public member, Sarah Cassell, and that is, I believe, our committee at the moment. Um, a couple more people haven't signed on yet, but they might be coming in a little bit late. Anyway, I welcome everybody. Um, we had a packed agenda. Um, some people have dropped out. I think that update went out this morning to let folks know that the New York Waterway banned boats and loud horns event um, or discussion was postponed till next week. So this was a weird month where um, our usually the Battery Park City Committee meets the first Wednesday of every month because of the Jewish holidays, we got pushed back to the last Wednesday of the month. And of course, October starts up with us being the first Wednesday of the month. So next week, next Wednesday, we're on again. Votes will be on for discussion and New York Waterway will be coming to that October 6th meeting. Anybody who's calling into that particular issue, I'm sorry. Um, we'll talk about it next week. Tunnel to Towers race, post race debrief. Um, they, the race was yesterday. It went well. I think it was a success by all standards. I don't know what people are going to say or, or have comments about, but um, hold that until November. They're understandably a little bit exhausted after their 30 to 40 thousand dollar thousand person not all uh, event yesterday in Battery Park City, and so they asked for a little time to decompress. And I said it's suggested they come back in November, so that'll be the November meeting. And I don't know if anyone is here from the Battery Park City Neighbors Association. Um, if so, uh, raise your hand. Uh, and Judy Weinstock is in the in the attendee session, Lucian, when you have a minute, bump her over. But if someone is here, raise their hand. Lucian will will let us know, and we can speak to that. Otherwise, Lucian, um, unmute Patrick. Okay. Oh, actually, wait. Before we do that, um, I just want to start the conversation before we go into the um, discussion. And Patrick, I think your your uh, presentation or your discussion today will be a lot less. Um, contentious because I think it's just going to be hearing from you and I'm not sure anybody on the chat is going to weigh in so I don't think anybody's here but let's give it a minute and we'll see what happens but before we get started um I want to tell you about how things work for those of you who are not here we we are operate under Robert's rules so that um we can conduct a kind of an orderly meeting and so what that means is you're muted until I call on you to speak um, everybody will have a chance to be heard. You raise your hand. If, if uh, those of you in the chat have to figure out how to raise your hand, or if you know me, text me if, if we're not responding to you, but raise your hand in the chat. Otherwise, people on the committee can wave at me also. That's fine. I see, I can see them. You can see us, but the attendees, I can't see you. Um, that said, everybody on the committee gets to go first, ask their questions, make their comments first, and then we go to the public. So don't be don't don't think I'm ignoring you. We just have a process, and like I said, I have every intention of having everybody heard, and I appreciate your interest and your time calling in. All right, first thing to talk about is um, inclusion and equity. This is something that um, our esteemed chair Tammy Meltzer has asked every committee to put on their agenda. Um, I kind of think every meeting so that we call attention to the fact that. Um, we need to be, we're, we are a community, a public community made up of volunteers, but we're also people who represent other people. And I think we always have to be aware of who our constituents are, who our community is. And um, everything we talk about today, I really am going to ask that we look at and think about in the back of our mind, who is it that each issue is addressing? Who is it in the community that's being um, affected by what we're talking about? And I think we all need to take a step back and be open to the fact that somebody might want to raise their hand and say, 
what about me? You know, you're looking at it from your perspective and your perspective is, is great, but I have a different perspective and we need to make room in our meetings for that to happen. I honestly am not quite sure how to do that except to listen. So I'm open to on the committee. Anybody has any different ideas or any suggestions? Um, something that Betty sent to me that she has done with her transportation committee. Um, she had questions where, where you kind of look through a lens of how different groups might be affected. Um, how barriers to inclusions could be minimized. Um, whatever project or request we're talking about. So to me, what comes to mind is security. Who are we trying to protect? What group are we trying to, to look out for? And if, in fact, we're looking out for one group and there's another group on the other side, are they part of our community? Are they people we have to look at too? And I mean, I think the answer is yes, but um, how do we engage them? If they're not here, how do we engage them to come forward? And how do we look at a more holistic view? Because Battery Park City is kind of like a microcosm and, uh, you know, we have issues here that touch upon so many different things, but we also have our governing body being the Battery Park City Authority. So a lot of stuff that might be picked up in different um, uh, committees within Community Board 1 sometimes get touched on here too. But I'm opening it up before we start and before we call Patrick to speak. Does anybody have anything to add and um, any other different ideas about how we can look through and address um, Equity and inclusion. Um, Eric, go ahead. I guess I, I just have a starter question for anyone who's complaining that they're not being included. Um, yes, I think so. I'm, I've heard it in the past. I don't know that we've had the ability to address some of the stuff before, but there have been people who have complained. I'm going to try to figure out a way to invite them back. Yeah, I think anyone who has a complaint should be allowed to go. Obviously, they're allowed to come to any meeting, but I think it has to be up to us to say, hey, come here. We'll, we're willing to listen to you. Yes. Yeah, so no, I mean, that that makes sense. I mean, I, and I think that. Um, I think that we need to make room for all voices and, and I guess maybe my question to you is going to be who, who do you think of and who do we think of as our community? Who, who is it? I mean, clearly it's the people who live here. Who else is a community? And I see Kathy raised her hand. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, one of the early um, conversations I had with Tammy on this topic was about the difference between the people who live here and the people who use and work and study in our community. Yep. And I think uh, we should pay some special attention to Stuyvesant High School to the school groups that come into Asphalt Green, for example. Um, I'm not sure about the other cultural institutions in the community, but um, trying to get a handle on who uses them, how they perceive the community, what needs do they have that we could possibly address. And uh, that may extend to active recreation as well, although it's not so easy to get to people who are just playing in the park as it is somebody who's going to a swimming class at Asphalt Green. Sure. Right, because you have a way to reach them. Yeah. So uh, perhaps over the course of the next year, you know, we may outreach to some of those. That's you know. a great idea. Yeah, and no, you're right, because the high schools is here and those um, children, some of whom have been um, high school students have been on the committee. Um, why am I spacing on on? on no, it wasn't Sam. I'm um, sorry. Um, I can't remember his name. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Spacing out too, Justine. Say again, you're spacing out too. I, he's, yes. a, he's a lovely guy. You got lovely young man who's off to college, same age as my daughter. Who's a, so he's a junior in college. I should know his name, but I don't remember right now. But he has was an invaluable um, member of our board. And um, yeah, but and he lived here while he, clearly while he was. Um, Oh, I see his face, but I don't remember his name, but that's 1 way to get people involved. But I'm also wanting to have public who don't want to commit to a volunteer position. Just come in and speak right and and workers. Something that you said, Kathy is smart and, you know, is, is very telling. How about the people who work here? 
the doormen, the, sure. the, the grocery store workers, uh, the Brookfield workers, if they're so inclined. Um, in years past, <laughs> dry cleaners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the dry. Right, exactly. Think of think of a, a restaurant owners. You know, um, people who who might want to come forward. I know there was a conversation that you and I had to try to invite some of the owners to come back and say how are you faring in COVID. That would be a conversation. But anybody else? I mean, that's great. Thank you. Anybody else have any ideas? Or want to say something? All right, I don't quite see anything in, I don't see anybody's hands raised in the chat. And if you're uh, on the board here and I'm missing you, just talk because I i don't see anybody say anything. All right, so I think for okay, now, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, just please. please. Um, may I, um, can you, is there a way to recruit a high school student now? Mason was great. But. That's it. Thank you, Mason. Yes. Thank you so much, Sarah. Mason. He was great. But I'm thinking that we could probably use someone um, from Stuyvesant. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it wouldn't be too hard to do. We could probably get somebody local. Yeah, you're right. Because 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 Mason um, didn't. I don't think he went to Stuyvesant, but he lived here. Stuyvesant yeah. students are students here. But we've got yeah, exactly. And and we have a ton of other high schools okay. in the range. So Lucian, that's up to you. I think we have a full board now, but it's something I think that didn't um, Gail Brewer, um kind of we make a push to recruit. Them. No, she set aside one seat for uh, a young person. Yeah, Not at least Iverson, but any place, right? Exactly. Yeah. So no, that's a great idea. Up. Sixteen years of age or older. Anybody could apply, Only right? Requirement, yeah. You have to have an interest in the district, live, work, have significant interest, and be 16 or up. And 16 or up. So so it's not that anybody, people are barred. Any of the people we talked about, they're not barred from joining. It's just, I don't think they know they can, nor do they know maybe they want to. I don't know. But I, but I also see uh, Betty Kay and then Jeff Galloway. And then Robin. Go ahead, Betty. Go first. I, think, I think people are just looking at this way too narrowly. Okay. Uh, the whole bit of inviting people, such as having a student or a, nobody speaks for a whole population. I don't speak for all disabled, although clearly I have a disability. Uh, the issue is people have to go out and talk to community members. I can tell you that a lot of the disabled that I've met around the community, some live in the community, some come here by bus specifically because they like to use the parks. Because okay. they like to come and go to Brookfield's place. And so I chat with them about the coming and going, and that's how I found out that's why they like to come here. It's okay. much more accessible than their own neighborhoods. People have to go out and talk to the vulnerable populations to get a diversity of opinions, even within those groups. So whether it's, we have plenty of people who can represent the elders, you know our neighbors and other people. So it's it's looking at the different age groups. It's really anticipating who would be impacted and how could we, what would that impact be and how could we potentially minimize that to make equalize a bit. And that's why I put in, I have worked on this for so long with disability. The real issue is inclusion. It's not just discrimination. Mm -hmm. because a lot of people are excluded for reasons you don't think of. Correct. Which is why, for instance, on the resiliency projects, they were very key to me because I can see barriers that other people don't really pay any attention to because they can just climb the stair. Right. No, that makes sense. So I think we want to look more broadly as to who are the vulnerable groups and how do we include questioning every decision made? How would different groups be affected by this? And then talk to neighbors and other people who could be in those groups. I think that's great. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, and it's it's a challenge and you basically, this is a call to action for us, right? To reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Uh, Jeff? Yeah, I just wanted to add some kind of confounding thoughts. I don't have any <clears throat> solution to them. Um, uh, I, I believe the city charter defines the um, community board um, constituency and the ability of people to serve on the community board as the people who live or work um, 
in the district. Um, and there are in pre COVID times and presumably in post COVID times, probably more people who work here than live here. Yes. Uh, and we need to keep them in mind. Um, uh, keep them in mind is all I can say, because yeah. we don't have an easy solution, but it's not just the people that work in the dry cleaners. It's the hundreds Correct. of people that work at Goldman Sachs and American yes. Express and mm -hmm. wherever else um, that, that, that work down here. So that's one confounding thought. I have no solution, but just. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. I agree with you, workers. Uh, yeah. um, um, and, 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 and as we know, much of what is put into design thought in our area, whether it's transportation or, or otherwise, is designed to get those workers in and out and comfortably and be comfortable while they are here. Um, now, over the years, I've both lived and worked in this area. I've worked here longer than I've lived here, but and I've lived here 30 something, almost 40 years, um, 39 years I've lived here. Um, so that's one confounding thought. The, the other is on the high school, first of all, there's more than one high school. I mean, there's only one high school in Battery Park City. Correct. But, but there's this, more than one high school in, in yeah. CB1. There are several high schools in, uh, in, in, in CB1 serving a, a whole range of demographics. Um, one thing in, in my uh, younger days on the community board, I still had young children and I was heavily involved with the athletic facilities and, and um, active recreation in Battery Park City um, and coached Little League and, and so forth. And one thing I know from that experience, and it certainly hasn't changed over time, is that we, um, are way over, have always been way over capacity in our active recreation facilities uh, from residents alone. Correct. Uh, uh, people are turned away from soccer. People are turned away from Little League simply because we have no place for them to play. And that's not even counting the unstructured play uh, and, and everything else. And I, I recall in the olden days, conversations with people who work for the authority or the conservancy that managed the ball fields, that they had basically had a almost zero tolerance policy towards Stuyvesant in terms of um, demands on the recreational facilities. Huh. Um, uh, on the theory that you let a high school loose on recreational facilities and they can take it all themselves. And so Stuyvesant has historically basically never played, and maybe in recent years they have, but I don't believe they have even in recent years, played on the ball fields uh, and haven't really been eligible to play on the ball fields. Their football team and whatnot played up at Pier 40. Um, I raise that as, once again, a confounding factor. I don't have a solution for it. Is it right or is it wrong to prohibit the high schools from using the athletic facilities? If we do permit them, we will realize that you know the little league and the soccer league will have less playtime on the fields than they currently right. have, and they're already turning away people. So w we have limited resources. Um, True. And how do you share those limited resources? How do you share those limited resources? I mean, viewed from the outside, we may look like uh, you know having a wealth of facilities and so forth. Viewed from the inside, and certainly a lot of the people that consider themselves our constituency, we're already rationing the, facil the facilities that we have. I have no solution. I'm just raised that as confounding factors. So that's, those are my two comments. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Those are, they are confounding questions and, but they're good points. So thank you, Robin. And then I think we'll go to the chat. Uh, people have been texting me offline. They don't know how to raise their hand, but um, when I say the chat, we'll go to the attendees after Robin. I'll tell you who to, um, I think, I think um, if I say it right, Igor um, Yarmak, Yarmak, the next person, but, but Robin first. Yeah, hi. Um, just uh, maybe a little bit more confounding thoughts. <laughs> um, first, I wanna react to what Betty said, and I understand and appreciate the need to address the needs of the vulnerable, whatever those vulnerabilities are. But I think it's a much wider net 
that we need to cast in terms of the diversity of our populations. Um, in terms of the ball fields, I've been around a long time. I was with the authority for a while. I think, and and Jeff, jump in here if you have the same recollection, but I think that the idea was that the ball fields were really designed for younger children who could not travel on their own to, to go other to other sites. I mean, I know when the ball fields are closed, people have had to, but I think for high school students, the thought is, that they are traveling to and from school on their own and they can, in fact, you know, make their way to other places. Is there an opportunity mornings to use the ball fields for in school students? Maybe, but you know, the after school and weekend, as Jeff said, are completely oversubscribed. And I know that the permitting process is really difficult for the, the authority because there are so many demands. So I give you that. Um, I don't know, you know, when I think about workers here, whether they're workers at Goldman Sachs or workers at Mercedes. I mean, there's such a diversity yes, uh, yes. of workforce. And of course, most of the people who comprise the workforce are not local people. They come in, they work, and then they leave. Yes. So how much involvement that, that um, tranche of the population uh, would have is unclear to me. Uh, but I was thinking maybe we could host or hold, I don't know, maybe a crazy idea, sort of an open Battery Park City Committee meeting, get together or something and invite those constituencies that we don't really know. So I love that I idea, Robin. Yeah. I love it. An out open BPC like committee open meeting house kind of, uh, but in, until if not in person, then a virtual yeah. open house invite groups to come in anyway that's it i know you have other questions and speakers no no, that's okay we got a lot of people in the chat and i know a lot of them are from the volleyball esplanade committee or you know coalition team whatever so they've got a lot to say but um start with igor and then i see lee do and then i see taylor banning and linda burns i think i've got everybody but let's go in that order lucian i think Igor, if i'm saying it correctly correct me if i'm not um you're you're, you're unmuted Hello, hello. Yes, hey, how uh, are you, Igor? Hi, hi. Uh, my name is Igor Yarmak, Excuse and um, I am an IT and financial service professional and a long time Battery Park City resident and property owner. I, uh, I've been living in the neighborhood since 1997, and uh, I would like to tell you from my personal experience. What a great place the Battery Park City Esplanade Plaza is. And uh, there are very few volleyball sites in the city. Most of them are for people who are already good volleyball players. But the group that regularly plays volleyball here is a very unique group. There are people of all ages, races, sexes, sexual orientation, skill level. And who are those players? I'm in my 60s, almost never played volleyball before. If you don't count, of course, playing some beach volleyball in a Costa Rica resort for a few days. And I was gladly accepted as one of regulars in this group. And I saw so many times when people just stopped by and after seeing what fun everybody had, asked if they can play, and no one has ever been rejected. And there is no other place where I could meet all these people and have so much fun playing volleyball and socializing with them. And I would say in a way it is a model of what New York City is a diverse place where everybody is accepted. And uh, although it's often referred to like as a volleyball court, Esplanade Plaza is much more than that. It is a gathering spot for residents, office workers, visitors, uh, examples of popular Battery Park City Park sponsors events, 
held there include folk and swing dancing, concerts, religious gathering, um, community groups and New York City nonprofit groups use the space from May to October for events such as charity, run walk events, boating related events, uh, you name it, like dogs, Halloween, costume parade, etc. And uh, it has been the home for many years of the Battery Park City Block Party, which will resume again in 2022 after the pandemic. Uh, in winter, the plaza is one of the largest snow play areas in Lower Manhattan, where most of the lawns in BPC are closed. And I, I would like to tell you that uh, a petition to save the Esplanade got more than 500 signatures just within a yeah. few days after it was submitted. So, so Igor, I'm going to interrupt you not to stop you from talking about this, but it's True. not time yet. I didn't bring this up as a comp. It, we're going to, we have two things, something we want to finish the inclusion and equity first, but you raised some really important points. And I guess what I'm going to ask is hold on to that thought because you've just said so much important information. I thank you. Please hang on the call with us and, um. Listen to the rest of it, because what I really want to hear right now and what we're talking about right now is how we can. In incorporate so with everything you just said is actually really important because how do we incorporate inclusion and diversity. Into the volleyball courts and the esplanade and that's a great. Information I'm not there yet. So, what I'm going to ask is if, if, if Lee do is going to talk about. Inclusion and equity and people to be bringing in. I'm calling on you now, so unmute. But if you want to talk about the Esplanade wait and volleyball team and place, wait because I'm going to call on you in, a, in about ten minutes or less. So um, leave. Okay. Ahead. Do you want to wait, um, or do you want, do you want to say something about the inclusion and equity about who should be considered first, in your discussions? I I can talk some about uh, diversity first, and then we can go back to the volleyball Perfect. court. And then I will call so, you for the volleyball court. So yes, speak. Thank you. Good, uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you, Justin, for inviting us. Uh, my name is Lee. I've been Battery Park resident since 2014. Um, for the diversity here is, uh, I am a Chinese, and I don't live like I don't grow up in the U.S. I don't even speak good English. You but do. Uh, uh, all my friends are Chinese before before this. I don't. I know none. I have none of Spanish friends, none of uh, Black friends, and very very few white friends as well. So it's kind of like a, I am very isolated. But since volleyball here, I met so many friends from different races, from different ages. Like Eagle, he is like an elder. He's like my father, like my father's age. Um, I'll be so happy to to play with my father because my father was in China and then we haven't met each other for very long. But like here, I can play with all age of people in my father's age or in my brother, younger sister's age and all races of people. I have never met so many friends in, in so, so much different background. They all like similar to me, like go to college, graduate school and work in a like financial in, or tech industry. I've never met so many people. They're coming from all different colorful words. So this is like largely widen my world and getting to know each other. I think it's it's greatly increased my um like it opened my world to to all different kinds of people. And I I feel I I feel I know better than before. And I have more sympathy to other people and more compassion. And I am so glad the joy we had together here in Esplanda. Lee, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Um, maybe Taylor Banning next, but Taylor again, not the volleyball court. Tell me about diversity and inclusion and about who else is part of this community. Because clearly Lee has shared that volleyball players are part of her community, as well as living here since since for a long time. But go ahead, Taylor. You're unmuted. But I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me. Now a little bit better. Now, uh, go ahead, try it again. Talk into this. You're very low, Taylor. Hello? 
Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, but yes. Yeah. Yell? Okay. Well, I, I don't know why you can't hear me. I'm actually at the volleyball court and you're on like Bluetooth speakers projected onto the whole Esplanade. So go oh, God. Oh, God. Battery Park City is listening to your whole meeting on diversity and equity. So great job. <laughs> we're excited to have this conversation. Um, and I, a lot of things were said that were really important ready, but I just want to add that we have uh, so many work in our community that are also um, members of this community board. So many what? So many what? Workers. We couldn't hear you. We couldn't hear you. Workers. Can you hear me? Yeah. Workers of all types, not just office workers. Um, so often their voices are unheard on the boards um, by the residents, and that needs to change as soon as possible. I know the city council is starting to talk about important things for delivery workers that they've been asking for for over a year, um, especially like access to bathrooms and many other access to fair pay um, and actually access to their tips that we think is, you know, that aren't ending up in their pockets as we hope they would. Um, a lot of things are talked about, um, but so much of our essential workers who work in our community has kept this community running COVID and 9-11 and so many uh, natural disasters get under seen and we need to do our part to make sure we're giving proper space for them to be heard not just um assuming that everyone knows how to access a meeting like this there's almost 300 people that i'm at least in contact with around this volleyball thing and it has been so hard to like spread the word these boards are not made accessible even the way this is even running is not terribly accessible i know we're trying to change that but we have to think about like ability and access to Think both physical disability and also various uh, types of thank you for your time and talk more about volleyball down the line. Yes, we'll yeah. talk more about volleyball later. All right, no, thank you, Taylor, for sharing that. Um, so, Allison, and then um, I think we're going to close this out unless anybody on the board wants to speak. But, Allison, next. Go ahead, Allison, you're unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, hi. Okay. Well, um, I am actually somebody who's lived in uh, Battery Park for about the last 12 years or 13 years. And I'm actually somebody that um, used all the, um, the sporting facilities. Like I've used the ball field. Yeah. I've used the volleyball court more often in the last couple of years, the volleyball courts. And um, I do want to speak when it's time to talk about the volleyball courts, but I also think that um, uh, to what Lee said that it's given me an opportunity to just be down there and be a part of a group that I never would be a part of. And not just because it's a court, it's like it's actually creating the diversity and inclusion. <laughs> so it's really interesting that it's like, oh, there it is. It's it's right there. So it just it just I just think it's really important to find ways of um, um, I don't know, inviting um, the, the New York City, because New York City by itself is, is very diverse, unless you go to like, you know, certain spots, but the city itself is very diverse. So inviting them into the community in ways of like maybe hosting events or, you know, things like that, that are of uh, interest to people of different demographics, um, instead of just, because I, I get a newsletter that says, this is what's happening in Battery Park, so it's possible to have that newsletter go out to the wider city so that other people that aren't necessarily just in Battery Park and the workers too, if they got the newsletter, they could also participate. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Allison. Um, in response to that, I think that the newsletter gets sent out by the authority to anybody who signs up for it. Um, just like the broadsheet is a paper that's for the local paper that goes out to anybody that signs up or um, goes for it. So that's one thing. So spreading the word to ask people to sign up for it. Community board too. We have a monthly or weekly or Lucian could tell me a regular newsletter that goes out. So we, we do put information out there, but part of it is with everything else, um, you have to um, touch it. You, know, you have to reach out for it. I mean, I know, I know that both groups have Twitter, they have all sorts of stuff. So anyhow, but yes, your point is well taken, Allison. Um, and the other side of the coin is, I'm going to throw this out, and this is going to be very unpopular, but limited resources. I don't know if it was Jeff that said that, or Betty, or somebody, or but 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 there's another side of the coin too that is limited resources. And so inviting 
everybody to come into this this particular space everybody will be too much but you also don't want to exclude anybody but i just i throw it out there all right i'm going to shut down inclusion and equity discussion for now and we're going to move on to um ask uh, and and that inclusion and equity, I think I'm shutting it down as a topic, but that is something that's supposed to permeate our whole meeting. So whenever it ever comes up, uh, help me do better with it all is what I'm asking everybody on this call. And I invite all you new people who have called in tonight to call in every every month because stuff, you know, every single one of you who spoke lives in Battery Park City. And I don't know that I recognize any of your faces from this call. I, I have played volleyball with you and I can attest the fact that. You are very inclusive because letting me play is is very inclusive, <laughs> but um, um, you know, there's more to this neighborhood, and this neighborhood needs your input and your voices. But let's go on and move the discussion to um, the Allied Ambassador of Contract Expectations. So I think uh, that we talked a, a long time about um, diversity and inclusion. I think Patrick, if nobody is going to push back on you. I would love to wrap up both your contract expectations and the security update in 15 minutes, but you tell me, I, I'm not going to cut you short if you've got more to say. And you, I think if you're in the regular chat, you can un unmute yourself. Yes, uh, I just unmuted myself. No, okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, uh, what what was the uh, contract expectations discussion when you when you brought that up? Uh, what did you want to discuss? Well, and I could, I'm sorry, Justine. I could yeah, uh, it's, it's help me out with that. Thank you. Because um, yeah, no, 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 it's completely okay. And, you know, the conversation you just had to. I'll, I'll I'll chime in when it's time for my report. But uh, kudos to you all for having that conversation because I know it's not easy and it's kind of intractable sometimes, and there are various competing priorities. But um, the right conversation to be having so kudos to you for that who am i to say kudos but i think it's the right thing to do um so pat we had discussed this a little bit and justine maybe it makes sense um one of the things that we had discussed in the past and this was at um kind of some of the discussions that grew out of the community board conversations uh some years ago was the want to have um, SPOs or what we call special patrol officers come out of the allied contract and there was a renewal that went through um, a few years ago to uh, extend the contract. They've now been on the ground since the end of uh, 2015 here in Battery Park City. Uh, Patrick and I have had the, the pleasure of being at, and I think Patrick longer than I have, but since I joined the authority in April 2016, um, every month for over five years, we're with you all discussing uh, items of concern and quality of life with the committee. One of the things that grew out of that, as we said, was a special patrol officers, which is the ability for certain of the ambassadors that are on the ground to issue summonses for certain parks violations. Uh, and God forbid, if they need to make an arrest, although that's never the goal right. or issue summons for that is. And, and we have four compliance. now or more than four? I don't remember. Well, so what I'm going to let you, I'm going to let Patrick do, if it's okay with you all, is I'll kind of let him update you on where we are at the SPO uh, okay. uh, process. And then the good news is, as we continue to knock on wood, come out of the pandemic, we are now being able to process some more applications for additional SBOs to join, which I know was one of the expectations the community board had when we talked about renewing the contract. So maybe that's a good jumping point for Pat and go from there. Okay. Uh... I have uh, two supervisors. They're attending the Cooney course for SPOs, and that course is coming is coming to an end. So after I get their certificates, I'll submit them to the police department. Their background check has already gone through with the police department, so the police department had already cleared them before attending. So I was able to do that during the pandemic. So uh, not to slow down the process any more slower than it already has been <laughs> because of this. Uh, so as soon as the uh, police department gets that certi the certificates, uh, then when they uh, go to do the sworn in ceremony, they'll be sworn in on the next uh, ceremony and they'll be able to go and, you know, write tickets uh, based based on the 
the summons and summonsable offenses that have been put forward. Okay, dealing with, you know, dogs off leash, smoking and stuff like that. So that's where we are uh, with that. So that'll put us up right now. We have three. So that'll put us up to five. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's good to know. Thank you. Because, yes, we did ask for that. Um, I don't think anybody on this call is represent here representing the Battery Parks and City Neighbors Association, which is unfortunate because I think they had said what I was told, which is why I scheduled this. And Patrick, I thank you for coming in. And Nick, I thank you for being prepared to talk about all this stuff. What I was told was that there were some emails exchanged and some complaints about dogs and non enforcement and no signs. So I guess the one thing that I would bring two things I would bring up because the folks that are having the issues need to come in and speak for themselves. So I'm not going to go there, but something that they did raise with me, which I can raise as an information. There's a piece of frustration that they were raising that after a call is made or a complaint is made, there's no closure. And I don't know what your procedure, you don't have to answer me now if you don't have an answer, but um, maybe next month we could just talk about that, what the procedures are. So if I complain and I say, oh my gosh, somebody, you know, got hurt outside or some dog was on the lawn and I want you to get them off the lawn. There's no follow up to the person well, who called, if in fact they gave you their number to call them back to follow right. up. I can, I can speak to, uh, to some of that because mm -hmm. there has, there has been at least one individual that, uh, you know, has been sending pictures and that stuff. And a lot of times these pictures are old. Yes. Okay. So in dealing with that issue and myself and Nick went and did a conference call with the individual and we spoke to him. Uh, there's certain people that believe that once a dog is on a lawn that you can give him a ticket. That's not the case. That law does not exist in the codes that we have to write a summons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what this person firmly believes. The other thing is that, you know, there's a large number of people in this community that have dogs that are service dogs. Mm. So, you know, once we're told that they're a service dog, that's it. That's the end of the conversation. You know, it's have a nice day, enjoy the park. You know, it's a service dog, the dog is supposed to be with you. Yeah. You know, okay. so, you know, unfortunately, uh, people that do have these service dogs, they don't have the dog wearing the vest, mm. okay, which would let everybody know who's observing that they're a service dog, okay? Right. There is a, one or two people that actually do have the dogs wearing the vest that are out there, but most of them do not. I guess they don't want the, whatever, the stigma of it, who knows, whatever their personal reason is for it. But... You know, and, and they're entitled to it. So a lot of times if they're sitting on a blanket, the safety ambassador will ask them, well, can you have the dog sit on the blanket with them? You know, that's it. You know, that's as far as uh, we've gone with it. Anybody that does not identify as a service dog and we speak to them, they leave. Okay. And believe it or not, some of the people that do not realize and they do have a service dog and... We tell them, well, the dog's not allowed on the grass, and they say, oh, it's a service dog. They leave anyway, realizing that the dog's not supposed to be on the grass. But not everyone does that. And with the pandemic, more and more people wanted to use the lawn. Yes. And more and more people went out and got themselves dogs <laughs> in yes. this community during the pandemic. They really did. So, you know. Yes. It's a lot of it's a bit of a perfect storm happening where we've got a, again it's 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 about limited resources and um, lots of people wanting to use the same space for different uses. So I hear you. I, I, I guess what I would say back is, um, let's just keep it going. And and I'm not. Um, all I can do is, is is say that maybe sometimes people knowing that okay these dogs are service dogs and. Um, tell the person that we can't do anything because they're surface dogs and they can go where they want. And then of course, what your masters may or may not do, but again, 
everybody in this world doesn't like, no one likes to be told what to do, but even the service dogs shouldn't be um, allowed to poo and pee on the grass. They can sit on the grass, right? But they shouldn't be pooing and peeing because children play there, people walk there, people lie there. And, and you know, you, you would like people to have consideration for their neighbors. Right, I, I agree. I mean, there was even the other day, uh... There was a loose dog running around down around Wagner Park where we ended up grabbing the loose dog. The dog did have a leash. Oh, wow. Okay. And that the just dog got, away from got away from its owner. So we ended up trying to find the owner and at the end having to have animal rescue come oh. and try and, you know, find the owner. And it was put out there on social media. You know, with a picture of the dog, what we had before it went to, uh, you know. But that's that's, so it, that's it's always great. a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's that a challenge. Hard. I'm hoping that dog yeah. got back to its owner because I get scared that if they go into the into the the system. Well, it was yeah. a really nice dog, friendly, so and sweet. you know. <laughs> yeah, Justine, to give to give you an idea of kind of you guys all know this based on your kind of careers on the you know, other side, the civilian side of what you do or the non-community board side. But this was really an interesting example of kind of government as it as it happens. I was making some some scrambled eggs and I saw on Twitter that we had been mentioned by someone who was saying, hey, there's a dog loose and I don't know who to call. I call 301. They send me to the police. The police send me back to 301. But thank goodness Battery Park City is there. And I said, oh, goodness gracious, I want to make sure that we're living up to the expectation. <laughs> and then no sooner do I see that tweet than I get an email from Pat's team saying, hey, there's a dog. We were able to corral it. Okay. Um, which was really like to talk about the perfect storm, but in a good way. But in so good we were able to get the dog, get it to animal care and control, who was then going to try to identify the owner, uh, provided the, the animal was chipped. Uh, and then we were able to reply on social media saying, yes, we can confirm that we did safely corral the dog and uh, it's on its way uh, safely to be reunited with its owner. So really a nice way to start a Sunday, although it started a little harried. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah, you know, Pat and his team are, uh, you know, we're doing okay. Paying attention. Doing okay. So I guess um, what I'm going to ask is just to, what's the stat? Did they ever find the owner or you don't know, but can we find out? Cause I'm scared with that. Uh, no, no, let me check. Uh, I, I, I'll do some research. I'll Thank see. You. I'll be start to say if we get animal care control and see. I mean, only because I don't know who are kill shelters and who are not. That's where I'm going with this. Right, and, right, and, right. And and if if the dog is a nice dog and gets readopted because something happened to the owner and it's gone, okay. Yeah, but if, if, if it's got a leash and it's got ID, I would imagine that it would. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the percentage reunification rate is, but I would have to imagine it's it's pretty high. Um, leash and there's something. Yeah, if there's some sort of a tag on it. The, the oh, believe me, the. Uh, Ahead, Believe me, the ahead. supervisor walked around to all the uh, building doormen down oh, there wow. with the dog, <laughs> trying to find out if it was somebody, or even if the doorman recognized the dog, because he was wow. like, "The dog's really a nice dog." <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. Well, yeah, Nick, that's what I'm going to ask you to do, just for the sake of just follow up. Yeah, thank I'll you. I'll find out. See, I'll see what I can find. And the other thing I would add briefly, Justine, as I sent it over to Lucian, and Lucian, being as quick and wonderful as he is, has already put it out on the chat. Mm -hmm. um, but what we have both in hard copy and on our website, we, and we treat it out periodically, we tag the community board, we put together this little kind of, it's a dog's life in DP trifold, which explains kind of some of the rules and regulations around dogs. And in addition to detailing uh, three different dog runs we have and some of the kind of the fat fun features we have for them, we also try to kind of reemphasize, and sometimes that's the key, just keep saying it and saying it and saying it and hopefully by osmosis, it uh, kind of uh, seeps in or sinks in. That makes sense. Um, so um, we have it. So we have it here again, yep. and I can drop some hard copies off to the community board office if you'd like. Sure. Um, and maybe dogs send it to the Battery Park City Neighbors Association. I'm assuming yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're complaining, so they're not the ones who are breaking the rules. One well, would assume, but yeah, well, <laughs> but yeah, one so, would so assume. We had some. So just so we have it for the board. Yeah. Um, dog cannot be off leash anywhere yeah. in Battery Park City, Correct. except in one of the three dog runs. Of course. Obviously. If you are not in a dog run, you must be leashed at all times. Yep. Okay. However, if you're not in a dog run, you need to be leashed. You still can't be on the grass right. at any time, <laughs> leashed or not. Yes. Right? 
However, if you're a dog, you can be at a hard surface. That makes sense. If you're walking through a park on a hard surface, you don't, you, you can be, you can be on a, you're not going to say you can't be in Rockefeller Park if you're on the, on the hard surface path. Um, and then the only other kind of nuance there is, yes, but there are certain hard surfaces throughout Battery Park City that are also otherwise designated as pieces of public art. For instance, the Irish Hunger Memorial or South Cove or other areas like that. So what the trifold aims to do in a kind of playful and simplistic way is to explain all that in plain language so folks can understand that they need to be unleashed at all times except in a dog run. And even when they're not in a dog run and they're leashed, they still can't be on the lawn. Perfect. Hard surfaces are okay unless the hard surface is itself a piece of art. Because one of the things that makes Battery Park City amazing is we have we live in Avatar. a park. We live in a park, and in those in those parks and public spaces, we have uh, beautiful pieces of public art as well. We like we said, we just want to make sure everyone has a chance to enjoy them yeah. to the full extent. Okay, so Jeff has his hand up, as does Eric. So Jeff first, then Eric. Sure, I wanted to say a couple of things. One is that I think the ambassadors and the authority do a good job of balancing enforcement with education. Mm -hmm. um, I like to often say that everybody likes to enforce rules as long as they are enforced against somebody else. Nobody likes rules enforced against themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, in, in the past, many years ago, um, we had um, issues back when the PEP officers were here. Sometimes they were very good, but sometimes they would have these spouts of, um, you know, zero tolerance where everybody would end up getting arrested for walking their dog without having a driver's license on them kind of thing. Um, and and so, I, so I think, you know, people do want the rules enforced, but they want it with a light touch. And I, and I think the ambassadors have by and large done a good Good job in that regard. Um, so that's one point. I, I agree. Wanted to yeah, no, um, I agree with you, and I appreciate the people who um, have issues. And yet, I prefer having a kinder, kinder, gentler enforcement. But by all means, they should call the ambassadors, and yeah. or if if somebody is violating a rule, I mean, rules do need to be enforced. And I think having a presence um, really helps uh, towards the um, enforcement. Um, but sort of the second thing I want to say is, you know, we live in a, a community, crowded community. Um, dogs are actually a net positive in my view. Everybody knows my view on that. Um, you know, neighborhoods that have dogs are neighborhoods with people that have decided to put down roots in that neighborhood because transient people, generally speaking, don't have dogs. But people who, you know, you'll hear lots of people say, well, when I finally move into my place and and and, and I know where I'm finally going to live, I'll get a dog at that point. And, and, and so it's a sign of a healthy uh, neighborhood. Same thing with kids. Same thing with having teenagers. And teenagers will use skateboards and do other things that are allowed that will annoy some people. But it's a sign of a healthy neighborhood. Um, same thing with a volleyball court. What, where, whatever you want to talk about. I mean, there's there's a vibrancy in the neighborhood that um, results in some level of annoyance to somebody, including myself from time to time. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, we need to take everything in, in context and I, and, I, and I think the ambassadors have by and large done a good job in that regard. You're muted. Justine, you're muted. Okay, what I just said was I see Eric's hands up, you're next, and then I see Amy K in the chat, so she's next, and then after Amy, she will be the last one on this topic, and we'll shut it down, and we'll move into the, um, introducing the Esplanade Volleyball. So thank you. Go ahead, Eric. Thanks. I have two questions, and they may have been asked and answered already, so I apologize, but what are the rules for uh, dogs in kids' parks, like at West Tame or Rockefeller? They're not allowed? I mean, you can pipe in or... or um, or uh, Patrick can correct me, but no, no one is allowed on the grass. No dogs are allowed on the grass. So in West Thames Park, on the grass, even if it's AstroTurf, the dogs should not be on the grass. So uh, AstroTurf yeah. is considered grass. It's, yeah, the kids play over there, they lie on it, they roll in it. No, dogs should not be peeing or pooping on the grass. Or yes, yeah, I'm sorry, Jeff, I should have been clear. Green spaces, meaning grass and or AstroTurf. AstroTurf, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's, that it's like, the ball, sure. like the ball field, for instance, obviously. Yeah, the ball field also is AstroTurf, no dogs. But go yeah. ahead. The second question is, if there is a violation, who, who do we call? Who do we, what's the number to contact? We'll put it in the chat, but yeah, thank you. It, it's, you can call the allied ambassadors. And if you're in, if you're in West Temps um, Park, their office is right right there, right, right in 200 yep. Rector facing the park. But yep. if you're not if you're in Rockefeller, you're not gonna walk all the way down. There's a phone number. So Lucian can share that in the chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's, no, uh, thank it's you. 212, it's uh, for the benefit of the group and Lucian has the email, the phone number and the, and the physical address, which is uh, 200 uh, Rector place. Um, the phone number is 212-945-7233. That conveniently spells SAFE, 212-945-SAFE. There you go. Uh, Remember, I knew it was something control. that was cute like that, but That's I didn't right. know what it was. Not as cute, What's not the last not four digits? digits? Not as cute as a dog, but cute. Safe is the a, last four digits, whatever that comes to on a uh, keypad. 7233, 212-945-33. 7233, uh, Yeah, 247-365. So you call them up and they will uh, have someone by directly. Thank you, Eric. Okay, Amy, and then you will shut down this issue. And I know Amy has something to say, so let's let's listen to her. And Amy, you got it. Un, um, Lucian, unmute Amy, please. There you go. You're um, yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm I'm not here for or against, but I think it might be easier. Um, I've lived here since 2001, and there was always a sign on Rector Place Boulevard, both the west and the east side of it, as well as West Ames Park. There was a large sign on the fence. I know that factually because my sons used it to practice how to pitch a baseball. None of those signs are there anymore that say no, no dogs allowed. So in the in defense of the ambassadors, I know I don't do often. If the <laughs> signage has been taken down, then residents don't necessarily understand that the dogs are not allowed to be on the lawns. And they never were. And I feel badly because dogs should feel grass just like children. But Children do play on it, so do adults, and it's disgusting how many dogs run around on all the lawns. So, thank, Amy, thank you for saying that because that I I missed that. It was like underneath the bottom I'm, of. I'm outside. Table. I just walked by all three of those areas just to confirm because that's what I know factually. Okay. But I wanted to come down and make sure I'm not crazy. None of the signs that have always been there are there anymore. Yeah, I think so. they're replacing them out, but but they do not say that the signs no longer say uh, dog no dogs. Um, so I, I heard that in the north neighborhood, and I heard it now. You're saying it down here. I so you can't blame the residents who may not have lived here long enough to know that legacy. Um, mm -hmm. But you also can't fault the ambassadors for not enforcing, enforcing something that it. is not it's not there for them to enforce. So they probably look at it and go, I don't know what to do. All right, so Nick, thank I'm you. Gonna... No, thank you, Amy. Thank you as always for your comments. I appreciate it. And Nick, I throw to you. Um, are they putting no dogs here signs up, or what's the deal? Because if you know, and you got no, one minute no, or less it's, to say, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a really good question. And thank you, Amy. So yes, as we know, it's in my report as well. We started in July uh, with putting in, um, new wayfinding, uh, informational, and directional signage throughout uh, Battery Park City. This is as uh, was discussed with the community board. A while ago, and certainly before the pandemic, installation was supposed to start, but obviously we had the pandemic. So you will see new signs going in and out, in throughout Battery Park City. Um, I think there is the opportunity for some additional smaller signs to be clear about where dogs can be. So, Amy, it's an excellent point, and we are in discussions about how, how best to do that. And although it seems like, well, it's a simple thing. So, for instance, I'll give you an example. I got, a, I got an email from, someone, uh, from one resident that I usually talk to lives down by Rector Park. And there are some new signs in Rector Park that have like a little Ghostbuster sign around certain things like no smoking, no drinking, no open flame, like basic things, right? You would think, well, we'll just put a dog with a little sign around it because no dogs in the park. But that's not true because the, part, the dog wants to, the owner wants to sit on the bench on the hard surface around the lawn. A dog can do that. So it's not as simple as saying no dog. You may send the message that the dog isn't allowed in Rector Park whatsoever. So I think, like we said, we have to thread the needle and be clear that there's a way to say it in as few words as possible so people stop and read it and understand it. But that's also clear enough to basically say no dogs on lawn. That makes dogs sense. Otherwise, Cause otherwise it, invited uh, and able to use the park. Right. Um, so like that. Like The signs used to say that. 
or we yeah. used to have pictures at least that was on the lawn and so it was clear where you could and couldn't be on the lawn right. and, and, and where you put it is also an interesting question right because you can put you can put a, a you know ghostbusters fine with a no dog in a planting bed that means you don't want the dog planting bed. it doesn't necessarily go on the lawn so you want to put it in a place that's on the lawn but then also not in a place that's going to interfere with people Playing using the lawn, lawn. Yeah. it tripped and you felt the sign that said there's no dog allowed so like anything else we are on it and i want to make sure that the wayfinding is uh is clear and consistent with folks while also being a kind of as light of a touch but as informative as possible so yes well uh duly noted and I want to have some signs out there that make it clear about no dogs on lawns. Now, listen, Nick, that was way more than one minute, but thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm excited. I spent so much time on dogs. I was so excited. I know. I know. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. I, I know sorry. the volleyball folks have wasted the sunlight. Sorry. Waiting sorry, for sorry, sorry. Yeah. So I, I, I want to invite them. No, it's okay. I want to invite the Esplanade. I think ha Harry um, Marvo, but it's more than Marvo in the attendee section. Um, so un unmute Mar Harry, please. Uh, there's two Harrys. So Harry, that at least on my little chart, it's M A R V M A V R O. Oh God, I can't see. R H I C H A L I S. That's what you don't mute, please, Lucian. And I think if that's not correct, then hi. Yes, that's, that's correct. Thing. I thought so. All okay. right, Harry. Thank you so much. And please thank you everybody from the volleyball team who are there. I'm sorry. I made you stop playing volleyball to, to wait to be called. Um, well, but thank you. Thank you so much for, um, for having us and, uh, letting us make our case. Uh, my name is Harry Mavromi Callis and I'm a film director. Uh, I was really touched by Lee and Igor's, um, um, what they had to say, because I too was, a an immigrant who came here by himself and eventually, you know, made a life here for myself. And, um, and the way that I found the volleyball court was, uh, through my bicycle. I'm a long distance cyclist and I came upon this group and I remember stopping and watching them and saying, oh my God, this is so weird. That's so, this is so strange. There's like kids, 18 years old, 65 year olds, men, women really good players, really bad players, and everybody was laughing and having a great time. And I, I stood there for an hour till I got the courage to go and say, hey, you know, is there any way that I can play with you? And they said right away, yeah, join us. And I've been playing with them ever since. And um, I, you know, recently we heard that uh, there's, a, there's a possibility of, uh, turning the the esplanade into a memorial uh for uh for um essential workers and we just wanted to you know we started a petition and uh an instagram page and like igor said we got 500 over 500 people on our petition in day within days um but um i wanted and to say volleyball that volleyball players right pretty much who signed Volleyball players, people who support our cause, uh, yeah, it just, um, we, we've been sending it everywhere. Uh, we just created a, a little scan that we can actually grab people while we're playing volleyball and get them to sign on the spot. So, you know, we'll be continuing that. Um, but I want, what I wanted to say is that uh, the volleyball court at Esplanade Plaza has become our, our mental and physical oasis in the midst of the pandemic. You know, we've we've all come alive again. We've been locked into our apartments for a year and a half, and we now have access to safe outdoor play. And um, and if you like, you know, Igor and Lee said, if you come and watch us play, you will see a brilliant representation of what New York City is all about, a true melting pot of people who just happen to you know, what connects us is volleyball. Um, we, we deeply believe that a monument that honors essential workers is important. It's just that we don't see the logic behind taking Esplanade Plaza and turning it into a mourning site. And why would you take desperately needed open space and turn it into a memorial? And why limit our opportunity to connect with one another and create community at a time when people feel isolated, depressed, 
and anxious. Um, I, you know, again, I just have a couple of a few questions um, that I, I'm not sure if you have the answers, but I just want to give the questions out. You know, sure, please. Has has the memorial been permitted? Has it been approved by the city council? Has there been an impact study on how it will affect the fabric of the community? Is there an approved design of the memorial and who approved it? Who has jurisdiction over the memorial? Who will be maintaining it? Who's funding it? Have the funds been allocated? What will it be called? In light of COVID, is this a priority for the mayor's office and the governor's office? So we hope that you will help us make a strong argument that the Esplanade Plaza and specifically the volleyball court remains a place of recreational and social community building. Thank you very much for your time. So, so Harry, stay on and stay on, stay unmuted for the moment. Um, so Nick, some questions that he's asking, I don't know the answers to, and I don't know if you do, and it's okay if you don't at the moment, because I know we have a new governor and um, Governor Cuomo is the uh, person, former Governor Cuomo is the person who was pushing for the, monu the, the Central Workers Monument to be made and to be made in Battery Park City. Um, with the intervention of the Battery Park City Neighbors Association, uh, Community Board 1, other community people stepped up and said, please, no, stop, let's think about this. And thankfully that happened. George Sunis, who is the chair of the Battery Park City Authority, um, stepped in and there was a lot of discussion, a lot of effort went into stopping forward motion. Um, I think many of us hoped that when um, uh, Governor uh, Hochul came in to take over Governor Cuomo's position, this would be a kind of a put to rest. I don't think it's put to rest. So I guess what I'm going to say to you, Nick, is um, I've invited the Esplanade Volleyball folks to come. First of all, to let everybody know they exist. People do play volleyball here and um, they are an organized group that has been organized and been in effect and they've got this chat that they, they've been going on and it's not this ad hoc thing. They exist for a long time. You've heard from some people, a lot of people live in Battery Park City. A lot of people come from the Bronx and Brooklyn and Queens to come play there. Um, so clearly it's a place where people play and I am holding um, George Sunis to his word that the monument would not be placed any place where people play or he said children, but um, I say people. <laughs> Um, and so many other things, um, Igor said other things that happen in the space. So all of that said, what I guess my, my question to you, Nick, is do we know if governor and, and again, you can tell me later, if you don't know, do we know if governor Hochul is going to honor that there was a commission formed where neighbors association, Tammy, myself, somebody else, I forgot, um, that was put on the committee at least by Governor Cuomo and Battery Park City Authority, I know there was a, something that was going to go forward, which would answer Harry's question about um, will anything happen without discussion? Um, I thought that that was a really positive step to invite people in and have community discussion. I, I want to say for the record, because I can say it here, no matter where the essential workers monument or any monument or memorial is built, the community in which it is supposed to be cited must be consulted and, 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 you know, it, it, whether it's here, whether it's in Elmhurst, whether it's in the Bronx, whether it's in Brooklyn, Staten Island, the community needs to have a say in what goes on because they have to live with it every day. And so that's my pitch for, I don't know what, democracy in the world. <laughs> but as far as it speaks to um, the volleyball court, um, I think that today we are not doing a resolution. I think that maybe next week, which is um, sadly, we have our next meeting next week, <laughs> next Wednesday, sorry guys. Um, if we have to, maybe between now and then, Nick, you and I can talk and we can get a sense of where everything is going and what's going on with everything because we're not going away. We don't we want to say in what happens. We want to say in the design. I mean, you know, everything that was said before, Paul's the Saws was, was really effective. They did a great job. The Battery Park City Neighbors Association really brought people together. Um, this Esplanade Volleyball Group is 
putting their voice towards that um, to say not here. And they join in the GPTA. I think their petition actually cites a, um, a statement put out by the, the, the Gateway Plaza Tenants Association, if I've got it straight, um, where they're saying, no, not here. So the question is, if not here, where? Um, and rather, I think as Tammy has said, um, rather than us saying, not in our neighborhood, what we're saying is, how about we take in and take it and look at where people are clamoring for it? Because at the end of the day, um, who is going to pay for it is a really good point. When it was Governor Cuomo, the state was paying for it. The, I'm assuming the upkeep was on the Battery Park City Authority, but that was an assumption. I did not have all that information. But there were a lot of questions Harry asked, and I don't know if you have answers. So I'm going to shut up, throw it to you, Nick, and you can tell me I don't have answers. That's fine, but go ahead. Of course, and Harry and uh, all the folks from the volleyball um, association. Thank you for being here. So this this is great. I, I you know I couldn't agree more. Which is what we have aimed to do. We being uh, the, the Battery Park City Authority, at least in my time here, is to um, always err on the side of community engagement, which was uh, a little bit of a shift from uh, the kind of episode over the summer. Um, what I will say is to the extent that I have it, um, we have a new governor and we have a uh, new governor, new priorities. Um, what I do know is during uh, the week before, I think 9-11 or leading up to 9-11, Governor Hochul was at the 9-11 Memorial across the street and was asked about the Essential Workers Monument. She had said that she agreed with uh, the former governor that it, uh, that it certainly should happen and should happen soon. And that it wouldn't be especially difficult for her to get community input, but the fact that she alluded to the fact that community input was vital, I thought was was great. Um, what she stopped short in saying was where it was going to be, or when it needed to be. Um, so that's the extent that I have of it. Uh, what I will say from our side is for the folks who kind of were involved uh, in, in following some of the news, maybe not all of it, because I can assure you it was a it was a busy busy couple of weeks. Where we netted out and what Justine had alluded to was uh, our chairman who uh, helped lead the way with the neighborhood uh, association, the community board, and a lot of other local interests um, had announced on, I want to say it was July 27th or so, that there was going to be a, um, a new committee, a new essential workers uh, committee uh, convened, comprised of representatives from not just the essential workers group, but local residents, the community board, state officials, et cetera. Notably, it was a majority of local interests on the board, uh, including from the neighborhood association, from the community board, Justine and Tammy, uh, et cetera. Um, nothing since then on that front. Um, I would uh, imagine though that if there is uh, some interest expressed in revisiting this, one of the things that would first happen would be uh, we would, I'd get reached out to and we would continue to um, share the community's concerns on any number of these issues of which there are a range. Uh, and certainly then uh, we can engage, but I have not heard more than that. Okay. If that's helpful. No, that is helpful. Um, please keep in mind that this is a place that's also you know, off the table <laughs> uh, as far as the community is concerned. And then I'm gonna bring out something before I call on this, more people in the chat, I'm getting messages here. I see Taylor's hand is raised again. I don't know if Allison is raising her hand again, but I, oh, Lee is raising her hand again because I cut her short um, and I'm trying to see who else. But what I also wanted to say to you, Nick, is that um, with through this call through Lucian, whatever, I'd love to get you some contact information for the leaders or the organizers of this volleyball, Esplanade volleyball. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So that when um things like um I think we texted over this um for the Jewish holidays, I I'm gonna mess it up. A tent was put up for some Jewish holiday event, and I think it was for Yom Kippur and then for Rosh Hashanah or vice versa. And it's on a volleyball court, which is fine. But because a lot of folks plan their days about where they're going to go to play volleyball that night, they didn't know about it until they showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, that's, I think that's fine. You know, just that's tell really us. Or tell them. I know, 
Sunday afternoon. I'm sorry about that, that I wasn't able to get it immediately. But yes. Oh, no, it's fine. But letting people know. And, and, and before it's, this, you had no way to let people know. Now you, no, yeah, you can't. That's exactly the point. It's super helpful to have folks who are kind of the plugged into the community. Although I always use the community board, thankfully, to you guys. Although I know we go at each other's throats sometimes. It's so good to have the community board as the yeah. default. Like I'll send some solution into you and the team and say, hey, heads up. Please help get the word out, which is always super helpful. But for a particular interest like this, it would also be great to have a contact in the volleyball kind of sphere. So, for instance, there's a volleyball issue. Who do I reach out to a volleyball? So when I have an issue on dogs, God bless his heart, Jeff Gallery gets a call from yes. me because in addition to being community board, he's also BPC Dog Association. Yes. Um, and when there are issues about mobility or transportation, I know that, and, or resident issues, I reach out to Betty because she's yes. kind of in that in that space. Um, it would be wonderful to have a contact on the volleyball okay. and um, and then in addition to when we push it out on social media, um, first off, we can make it a point that whenever there are going to be closures, we can Just make it a point them. to make it part of a regular social media kind of entree, but yeah. then also to make sure that, hey, they can also help spread the word on their circles about the court being down for, you know, a holiday or for exactly. the sunset gathering that we did at Gateway for 9-11 yes. or things of like course. that. Right. Of course. Uh, yes, absolutely. And stuff like that. That's very so. And then when you guys, if you ever get your dances back, right? There was always the 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 swing dancing and the right. salsa the dancing. Those, dance, those the little lovely dance. community events, and and right. they took up the volleyball court, which again, it's fine. They've got other places to to, to go, but not. Yeah, we just it's, want to. Set it's nice to know in advance. We want to set expectations so people can plan accordingly. That uh, seems very reasonable to me. And you Thank can. You so much. And you can use me as the liaison with the volleyball uh, group. Harry, if you put your email and um, phone number in the chat, only Lucian will see it, and he could pass that to um, Nick. Yeah, or just contact me. You know, or Lucian, just give me his information directly, however you want to do it. But yes, Harry, I'll reach out. That's super helpful. Super, super helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Um, I see some people in the chat. Anybody on the board want to say something? Wave at me, unmute yourself and talk. Otherwise, I'm going to go to the chat. All right, Taylor, Allison, Lee, and Amy. I don't know if your hand is still. Can you can you hear me? We can hear you. Can hear you. Okay, awesome. I'm used to the volleyball court. Actually, it was a bunch of friends. <laughs> We've been listening to your whole meeting. Great job. Thank you, Community Board One. Out of our city community. Speakers have been caused. Taylor, no, we Taylor, can't, no, hear, we can't you. hear you. Is, hear is, someone, some, is someone else is there, someone else there who, phone who you can use, you use instead, instead of yours? Instead of your? you, you can't hear me? No, not well. No, not well. Now? How about now? Yeah. Yes, now. Perfect. Okay, I just connected it from the speaker. How about now? Yeah, okay. Um, I can just say that I actually have grown up in this community and this court has been here for a while and only started playing this summer. Um, and it has changed my life dramatically. COVID has been devastatingly isolating and tra traumatic. Um, and this has brought me outside and out of isolation. And I found a group of friends and community that have really brought me back to life. So I can't like thank them enough and I can't thank this the Adversity Authority enough for providing this court. And I really, really hope this stays around for the long run haul because I know it's changed so many lives too. Um, and I've made some best friends here. So I'd like to hand them over to some people if you wanna talk. Wanna talk? Sure. All right, Curtis, say your name. Hi, hi guys, my name is Curtis. Um, I recently found this court about three weeks ago to a month. And it is amazing the community around here. It's so many people. They have a group chat about with about 200 people. And I come here right after work. I work three blocks away, and I just join the fun. You know, I play for hours and hours um, after work. And you know, the only thing that's stopping me is the nighttime. It gets too dark to play. But it's been so fun. And I hope, 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 hope. Please, please, uh, you, you guys keep this volleyball court because I'm having a lot of fun and it's a great community. Thank so, you, yep. thank you, Curtis. And Curtis, I want to throw this out to you and anybody else who works the neighborhood but doesn't live here. Going back to the beginning of our conversation, and some of the members of my committee on the the, the board here who've talked about getting some input from workers and getting some 
just ideas and, and information. So please keep calling in. Yay, Curtis. Here's All Dimitri, right. a resident at, at Gateway. Sure. Hey. Hi, my name is Dimitri. Uh, I live at Gateway, actually, which is like just right next door to this volleyball court. Um, yeah, and just wanted to say the court's been pretty central to like, you know, having a awesome social experience in my life post COVID was super isolated for like a year, maybe even a year and a half. And then like first thing I started doing, I came out was come to this volleyball court where everybody's just gathering every day playing and, you know, like we feel safe because we're outside. So nobody's concerned about catching COVID as much as you would be if you had to go indoors and do things. But yeah, this place is awesome and it would be really you know, disappointing if we got rid of it for a monument that basically would just preclude our social gatherings and everybody having fun and being physically active and playing a sport. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. Andy, Andy you want to say something? Yeah. So, my, yes, my name is Andy Tam, and uh, I've been playing here for about three months. And just in case no one has mentioned this yet, you know, um, first of all, I do enjoy playing here, but also I enjoy the time that we hang out after playing. For example, you know, we have dinner at, um, yeah, Treadwell or um, the district, et cetera, right? So um, the view is amazing. And we just enjoy spending the time here, hanging out and um, enjoying the view once again and uh, playing ball. So it has been terrific. I live in Williamsburg by the way. So I, I especially made the trip to come down here and see the folks and play. Andy, Gordy, you want to go? <laughs> Gordy doesn't want to go. Pam. All right. Um, one more. One more, and then I'm going to go to Lee because she's texting me. Okay. Hi, my name is Pamela. Um, I actually live in Riverdale, and I commute almost every single day for about an hour and a half to come down here. I am an essential worker. I'm a registered nurse. And, um, and I think that this community has given me um, what many of us have been looking for throughout the height of the pandemic, which is that human connection and, you know, feeling that you have a sense of community, feeling uh, happy. And I hope that, you know, you guys don't take this away from us because this is something that brings a lot of people together from a lot of different backgrounds, from a lot of different ages. Um, from a lot of parts of the city, and I think this is a great place that we have here. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Pam, our essential worker. Yes, thank you, Pam. There you go. This is your monument. This is Pam's <laughs> monument. Pam's court. Woo! All right, Taylor. If we could move on to Al to, to actually Lee, and then Allison. Thank you. We've got like, the people here all loving it. So we're here. We we we're here for the record. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and I appreciate it and I appreciate all you speaking. I just don't want to take up too much time. So um, if we can unmute Lee, Lee do, and then go to Allison and Amy, I'm assuming your hand is still up and I know Sai also has a hand up. So let's go. Al uh, Lee, then Allison, then Amy, then Sai. Um, I'll cut it too short because a lot of points I, I hear my friends from the court are already expressing how lively and this, how this court is important to them. Um, I just want to bring up, up a point of many of us. Do, does anyone know this court has been existing no. for over 20 years? So today, um, a friend, Howard Ye, who is also uh, in our volleyball community, uh, he shared an article about a key, his life with this court. He has been playing on this court 20 years ago mm. when he was working in the financial district, uh, like Bank of America, like a World Trade Center. Yes. So he has been playing since 20 years ago and he moved out of New York and now he is a father of three sons. So he's bringing his sons back to New York City and they are now playing on this court. This what is what a family legacy of that, like father and son sharing the same public space, playing on the same court they used to be. I just want to share share this to all of you. And this court is not only a recent thing; it has been exist for histories. A lot of people, like older people, they have memories here too. So let's not take that away from them. Yeah, that's all for me. Thank you so much, Lee, and thank you to your friend. That's lovely. Allison?
You see Allison Chamber, Lucian? There you go. Allison, you're unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Great. So thanks so much to everyone who spoke. Um, I just wanted to say in terms of the volleyball that um, I have family members that are essential workers and I honor and appreciate everything that they've done because it's been really something to put your life on the line to help save another human being. And it's not something uh, to be taken lightly. And I really honor and appreciate that. Um, I also think that there's a time and a place for everything. And I do believe that in terms of a volleyball side uh, or just a court, it's a, it's a, I would say it's a multi-purpose court because so many events are held there. And um, like we, I played pickleball there a couple of years ago when the BPCA, um, you know, hosted that. And there've been other events there, other people have rented it. So it's a multi-purpose um, community gathering site. And yes, volleyball is something that's played there very, you know, daily uh, during the right weather. So for me, it's really important. Like I had a health challenge this year and I couldn't walk a block because I couldn't breathe. And the minute I was able to breathe enough to walk a block, I ran down so that I could start playing. And there was no judgment. You know, I had surgery. My arm wasn't working. There's was no judgment. I'm playing with one arm. Judge, you know, just completely accepted. And to me, this is what makes this country, this city really great to be completely accepted exactly as you are. No restrictions, no limitations. And so I really appreciate um, the community that the volleyball court has been. I've played with six year olds on the court. I've played with seven year olds on the court. I've played with 18 year olds. I've played with 25 year olds. Um, and there is no judgment. Um, one day I was on the court uh, a couple of years ago and um, some guys walked by, uh, you know, religious, like very religious guys walked by and they saw me playing. So here I am, a black woman with dreadlocks, religious guy walked by with their, you know, religious garb and they're like, can we play? And I was like, this is what makes New York City. I said, where are you guys from? I thought they were from Israel. They said, Brooklyn. I said, oh. <laughs> so we're all there playing together. And I'm like, this is so great. I wish somebody could see this. You know, like sports has the ability to, to remove barriers um, between perceived barriers um, between people. And we, we do it here. I wish this is a, a testament to New York City, what's, you know, what is possible. So, like I said, I've lived here for 12 years. I look out the window and when I see the people on the court, I run downstairs and I run to go play with them. And I really appreciate having friends from all walks of life, all professions, all socioeconomic backgrounds. All of that happens there on that multi-purpose court, which we use for volleyball. So, thank you. Allison, thank you for sharing that. And and this is like it's it just brings back the inclusion and equity discussion and how cool it is, which Igor um, mentioned at the beginning of his conversation, but it all comes in a circle. And I love the fact that it's all different walks of life being brought together to play a sport. It's wonderful. All right, Amy and then Sai. Um, thank you. Uh yeah, I'm on this for the volleyball court mostly. Um and to the point of the woman who leads making the great connection about 20 years ago. Um, truly the circle of life is my sons from the time I stopped working full, to be a full time parent. My eldest was 2. He's now an 18 year old college student. And our favorite routine was he'd be in the stroll and I'd serve him lunch at the volleyball court in the middle of the day. And we would watch the men who generally were coming from. The hotels or the restaurants or the businesses playing volleyball court and he, that was our favorite routine and we did it. Every year of their, and then I had the other 1. And we did it all the time until they progressed to like we're out of strollers and they would just go just so they could chase the balls so they didn't go in the water for whoever was playing. Fast forward, they are now a part of that community. Um, and my 15 year old now plays and actually he was walking out the door and heard Harry speaking and went, yeah, let's go. They are welcome in that community. They, they talk about the adults as if they're friends until I go down to watch and realize they're talking about 60 year old men and women of all shapes, sizes, individuals, and they have experienced more diversification in that community of volleyball play and they love it. And I go and I sit and I watch and I beam because as much as I love Battery Park City and I do, that community is so much more representative of New York City that it's a gift to me as a parent and it's a gift to my sons to have that exposure and I'm so eternally grateful and they both signed a petition of their own free will <laughs> um, so I'm speaking on behalf of, you know, a mother who now has a varsity volleyball player at Xavier High School 
and I think it came from the fact it's osmosis from the time they were toddlers. They've had that opportunity and that privilege, and I thank all the volleyball players if you're still listening. Thank you for James and Sean. They support, and we are very grateful. And please don't take that away because for the children who grow up here, you get to a certain age and there's just nothing to do. Yeah. And volleyball, that court is one place that teenagers who want to be active and physical and social can go. And there aren't many places like that in this neighborhood. So, um, and for the young people, especially as Taylor said, the isolation, it's just been brilliant. And I, and I think if you want to honor essential workers, then you let, you have to give them a space to be. And if you yep. want to make this neighbor, if you want to talk about diversity and equity in this neighborhood, don't put a memorial to Hurricane Maria without having events for Hispanic Heritage Month or the dances that the BPC always had, and I'm sure they'll bring them back. Those were examples of great cultural diversity and equity and inclusiveness. And I'm sure we can go back to there, but we will need that space regardless. Yes. So. I'm just saying, um, as a parent, thank you, because my kids um, certainly have become young adults in the most po with positive influences from those players and that community, and I'm eternally grateful. Amy, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And I tell you, come play volleyball with me there, because they let me play, which is so shocking. I'll Only if my it. sons aren't there, I'll embarrass them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to okay. wait for the other one to go to college. I got three more there years. You go. There there you go. <laughs> I'm very embarrassing. I'm but very thank embarrassing. you all. But no, thank you for your words. Um, Sai? Hi, everybody. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sai. Uh, I live in the Lower East Side, but I've been spending a lot of time in the Battery Park area. Um, I just wanted to say I definitely agree with everything that's been said on this call from everyone uh, in the community, and you know, I'm very grateful for that. And you know, for everybody here uh, giving us this opportunity to speak about it, um, I mean, this this there are recurring themes that have been coming up in you know with this volleyball court, and I think it does definitely transcend just volleyball. It is definitely um, you know a community that has been gathered and, and built, and I think um, that cannot be understated for what it means to all these people. You know, whether it's mental health, uh, an outlet. Uh, community building, just trying to integrate back into what we were previously doing as, you know, normal. Um, and I mean, it, it, I really can't understate how important this has been to me and everyone, all the, uh, relationships, all the, um, friends that we've made because of this. And I think as a result, if you think, think about all the things we were talking about, um, that the community cares about the inclusiveness, I mean, this was an excellent example and platform where you've got different people from different backgrounds, um, you know, social classes uh, and, and all ethnic groups coming together for something as simple as volleyball, but then it's kind of evolved further than that. And um, one of the things I, I wanted to point out and, you know, uh, have to give everyone who's who was involved credit for is the community, this volleyball community that kind of started off as a ragtag tag group of people came together and started doing meaningful community events. Like we had a charity fundraiser, we had a recreational tournament and we raised money to feed, you know, uh, el the elderly who are un unable to, to move and, you know, get food on their own. So there's a lot of worthy causes. And even as we speak right now, I think there's a lot of good that this community is doing and talking about like furthering that. So, you know, apart from the inclusiveness uh, topic, if we're talking about what matters to the Battery Park community, I think you have the interest of these people through this platform in this area, um, like I care about now, uh, not that I didn't care before, but, you know, I care more about now what happens in this area because, you know, we, we are a part of it, um, even if we don't live there. Um, so things like um, services, outreach, uh, of all that, I think it's it's a great way to spread the message. And uh, if you want to, you know, reach out to more people, I think this is a great uh, opportunity and platform to do so. That's all I have to say. Keep it simple and short. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Sai. I appreciate that. And, and I appreciate all of you on the call. Um, Eric, I see your hand is raised, so wave at me if you want to talk again. But, um, or maybe it's been raised from before. But what I, I just want to say to close this out is I thank you all. Um, as I understand it and define what 
the community of Battery Park City is you all are included. Whether you work here, you live here, or you play here, you visit here, you study here, um, you're part of the community and we need to hear from you. So please keep calling in. Um, as it gets darker, six o'clock won't be so bad for a while. You won't be missing too much volleyball. But uh, yeah, and you can always check it out. Now you know how to find the website. So there'll be things that may interest you and may not. And at the end of the day, the only way we're going to become more educated about inclusion and equity is by having more voices. So I invite everybody to come back every month and, and, and be heard. Um, all right. Board, committee, anybody have anything to say? I'll just say that I agree with everything that was said. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Yeah. Anybody else, please just either say it or not. And um, then I'm going to move on to. I, I agree also with everything that's been said and, you know, remember all of the time that uh, our children, I mean, my son is 20 now. He learned to walk on that volleyball court. He rode his bike for the first time on that volleyball court. Um, he sold really bizarre paintings right there on the steps and he, um, what did he learn there? Oh, skateboarding. Yeah. So our kids grew up on that volleyball court it's it has been there for 20 years and wow. you know it's not it's not just the adults it's a wide variety of children that just children that go to school or don't go to school preschool yeah. um it's a great place for toddlers to walk around it and is get free and run it's it's a it's it's not just for adults it's great so anyway that's it yeah Thank you so much, Sarah, for saying that. So, Nick, the, the one piece that I think we're going to bring forth next um, meeting is to try to do a resolution just giving support to um, what Chairman Sunis, George Sunis, said about um, closing sort of a loophole, if it's a loophole, um, if that's the way to phrase it. Um, and Lucian, help me with the wording. But what we're looking to do is to say to the say that the Battery Park City Authority needs to be consulted. And um, yeah, I think it's consulted, right? And they have to have us have to weigh in on any more monuments or memorials being placed in Battery Park City. And part of what I would love to do is get an idea of of what what the loophole is that allows it, because I know that's what happened here. And um, I know that George Sunis acknowledged memorial fatigue in Battery Park City because we've got so many. Um, and I guess I'd like to work together. We don't have to work together in a public meeting. We can work together behind the scenes a little bit to get this pulled off, but I'd like to be able to work together to say, we just want you guys to have input because I honestly don't think we're not on the same page for this. Um, Cause you know what happens here. You, you plan the events here. Yeah, let's, let's, let's have a conversation for sure. I want to make sure that these, uh, that these concerns are addressed. Kind of just, right? yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Lucian and I kind of touched on it briefly, but let's let's make it a point to try and connect between now and I can't believe it's only next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. We'll so yeah, let's see what we could do. And if it's not next Wednesday, maybe it's going to be November. But uh, yeah, we, we, we should have the conversation. We should have the yes. conversation. Exactly. Thank you. Um, anybody else? No. If not, I think we might be able to. And just talk over me if, if the yes, because I don't see anybody. Um, I think the next thing on the agenda is Nick's report, which you're not going to talk about for ten minutes. And then we talk about capital expense budget items really quickly. Justine, I'll have you know that I didn't get to see you guys since July, at least in the No, States. you can't talk for 10 minutes. No. And <laughs> in July, I didn't even get to give my report, remember, because I know. we're talking about some other stuff. So no, it's yeah, fine. We're I, I will for like the, seven I will, hours in July. I, I will hit the highlights. As we know, um, this is always posted online as well. I went on for six, only 16 pages this time. But to be fair, that was like, Two and a half months of stuff, right? And I still didn't put everything in. The good news is I'm going to see you in 10 days. So I'll put anything else that happens between now and then, or that I didn't get into this one into that one. Um, but that said, Lucian, if you would do the honors, thank you. Um, just starting off here and a couple of things that I just do want to make aware of the committee aware of and a couple of highlights that had happened over the past couple of months. So thank you for that. We start off with the, the vaccination doses. This is from the New York State's website. Um, I would just note that to date, 
more than 25 million uh, vaccine doses have been done, have been given cumulatively. That's that's a running total every day. So, so far, so good. And in New York City, we're up over uh, six and a half million. So let's keep it going. Make sure that we keep getting vaccinated is the best way to continue to to get out of this and have more volleyball games and other things for everyone to enjoy. Uh, there's some information about vaccine eligibility there at the bottom of page one. I won't go into all the detail, but you have it there and as well as all the folks who are eligible for it. Um, I put some local statistics as well. The north and the south neighborhood are uh, keeping pretty low positivity rates. So every day we track this north neighborhood is a uh, 0.78%. South neighborhood is 1.53 against the citywide average, which is I think above over over two and a half or so. So we're doing OK. Please continue to to get those shots if you can. Um, <clears throat> the blood drive, as you know, we started this during the height of the pandemic. The next one is coming up. We're going to be doing two this fall. The first one's October 6th. The second one's December 8th. You can click on the link right there in the report to sign up for a slot if you're able to get blood. Um, although we do these, these blood drives uh, fairly regularly, the need is still acute throughout New York City. So thank you to everyone who has done it. We've gotten nearly 700 donations so far over the course of the drives that we've done uh, and more to come. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone who has, who has and continued to give, to give blood. It only takes a few minutes at Six, Six River Terrace and it's really wonderful. Uh, our fall 2021 event calendar has been released. Thank you to Tammy for the support of quote in the release. Um, we have a couple of upcoming events that I've just highlighted here, including uh, the Art How Classic, which is a virtual event on Thursday night. Uh, and then we have um, some events coming up in October, including the CUNY Virtual Choir Project and Go Fish, which is always a popular one. When I'm back to you next Wednesday, I will have a fuller rundown of some of the October events. I just wanted to give you a teaser of the ones that were happening, being, happening between now. Uh, and then okay, okay. Uh, scrolling down there, Lucian, thank you. Uh, top of page five. Uh, for those of you who, who may not know, uh, Bruno Pomponio, who is the longtime uh, Battery Park City Authority public servant, he's our current vice president of Parks Operations, is uh, retiring after 25 years of dedicated service to the community. He first, or nearly 25 years. So thank you, Bruno. His first day of work here at the Authority as a plumber for the then Battery Park City Parks Conservancy was September 10th, 1997, wow. to give you an idea of how long he's been here. Uh, he's just a he's just a really he's a good man. He's a great public servant. Um, whenever there was something happening in the parks or I needed something, Bruno was the guy. Bruno and his team to give a call to, uh, and he has as the mark of a great leader. Also, great not, tours to school children. He he's has great. He's just, amazing. All those. Oh, yeah, thank you. Just he's so great. Thank you very much. You know, it's really nice to hear that. And in the mark of a great leader, he's not only great at what he does; he's built himself a great team. So even when he leaves, uh, you can rest assured that our parks and public spaces will be in excellent hands. Uh, that's what Battery Park City, among other things, is known for, and uh, they're going to continue to get uh, only better. And some of the things just ticking off that he's responsible for in his time here, in addition to Teardrop Park and the Irish Hunger Memorial and Teardrop Park South, our trash compacting program was something that he was one of the architects of, uh, as well as the dog waste composting and uh, some of the zero waste and sustainability initiatives that we're working on in our park. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Bruno. More to come on that. Um, very briefly, Justine, we had chatted on this a little bit last week and Lucian, I think too, but the spotted lanternfly, this is uh, the topic du jour I know for a lot of folks. I have a lot of information in the report here, but uh, long story short, kind of the 30 second elevator pitch, they are not harmful to, as far as we know, not they're not known to bite, sting or attack humans or animals or or, or, or our pets, um, but they are uh, damaging potentially to trees because they latch onto the tree and they kind of suck out a lot of the uh, the innards and the nectar. So they were first discovered in the city in Staten Island in 2020. They have uh, spread across the region, of course, including in Battery Park City, what with our, our acres and acres of parks. The best thing you can do if you see them, and I'm not really a fan of saying this, but if you see it, you should you should squash it. Squash the spotted lantern. Squash them up. Squash them. That's what uh, I'm hearing. Everybody all... squash them, right? Right. Squash, squash them. Shoes on, everybody. 
We have also, we're monitoring the situation closely with the state agriculture department and environmental conservation. Uh, we've also in, uh, installed a couple of circle traps throughout the trees uh, in Battery Park City. So the bugs crawl up and they get trapped and they can't get out. Um, are those those plastic so, things that are kind of like wrapped around a tree? Yes, it's like a see around the tree. Okay. Yep. We're catch we're cat you know catching above you know more than a hundred or so each day on each you know uh, across all the trees that we've installed them. That's on. kind so, of horrifying. Again, we're, we're trying to catch them, uh, and at the very least, while the state no longer needs uh, reporting from folks because they know that they are in the city, for our standpoint, if it's anyone's, I'm sure everyone is online. You have your mobile phone and your apps. We it's in the report as well. We have what's called the iNaturalist app. It's a user content user generated uh, application and website. Where you can report any sort of uh, natural habitat type uh, instances you're seeing around Battery Park City. So if you see a spotted lantern fly, um, you can take a picture and upload it, and it helps us to track what we know is happening in Battery Park City. So when the state um, devises what it is, that kind of will be its presumably global solution uh, for spotted lantern fly beyond simply monitoring. It will be helpful for the Battery Park City community to say, hey, this is what we have in terms of where we've been spotting them and when. So if you want to do that, you can download the app or you can do it on your desktop uh, and it's linked right there for you. Okay. Nick, speaking of bugs, I think yes. I saw some place about spraying for West Nile virus. Are you talking about that next? Uh, I'm not, I don't have anything on West Nile virus today, but I can check for you. Generally, you guys yeah. know that we are pesticide free, so. I know, so that's what I was wondering. But anyhow, don't uh, have to talk about it. But, but that would be but you know, when it's helpful, I can come back. I'll jot it down when I'm going to see you next week. Yeah, I can let you know month. about any, any mitigating. Uh, mitigation strategies that may be done through also the city parks department. I will confirm what any interface is between us and, and them. But if they, that's a, and because I'm going to ask this and don't answer me now, but yep. if they're going to be pesticide spraying and you guys are anti pesticide, can they spray in here? Anyway. It's, a good, it's a good question. They, they should be. I mean, we, we have, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have communications um, and contacts in the parks department. So, um, no, not without us, not without us being consulted at least um, to find out what was happening. But I, I can find out more about West Nile and what the city, what the city has planned and what we have planned. Um, bees, uh, we talked about, I think as well, but um, well, I, there's, there's a part in the report, you can go through it as well. But long story short is we have a beehive installed in Rockefeller Park to increase um, uh, wildlife diversity. They are great pollinators, as we know. Uh, and bees are basically at the kind of core of all of this. The more bees you have, the more pollen, the more pollen, the more blooms, the more blooms, flowers, birds, food, diversity. It's really a, a beautiful natural cycle. So you can read all about it in the report there. Resiliency projects will be back to you. We were back to you in uh, in August. As of as a note for you, I know Alice and Tim will be very interested to know, and it will be up, I think, on Wednesday. So it will be in time for the full board. Under the South Battery Park City Resiliency Project solution, there, page seven, the draft environment draft environmental impact statement for the public scoping meeting for the South project is going to be Wednesday, October thirteenth at six p.m. It's going to be virtual, so you can do it from the comfort of your own home. The materials, including the sign up, uh, and the virtual link, and all the supporting documentation, will be live uh, this week. Um, so once I have that link, in addition to where it's posted. Lucian and uh, Justine and Tammy, I'll email you all. Um, you can spread the word far and wide, and then also make the announcement Thursday evening at the full board if helpful to you. I just wanted to give you a heads up now. No, thank you for that. And I'm interrupting to say to the people in yes. the volleyball chat if they're still here, this is stuff that you might want to pay attention to. It's not going to necessarily affect the volleyball court area, but it will affect south of there. Yeah. And of course, it all talks about flooding. Basically, the whole idea of resiliency is to prevent us from being drowned by. By what storm surge, but also just the water rising. Storm surge, sea level rise. Right. Thank you. Anyway, uh, go ahead, Nick. Sorry to interrupt. Don't be silly. I'm I'm, I'm motoring through him. I'm I'm almost I'm about half more than halfway through. So don't worry, and I'll go fast. Okay, page eight. Uh, we talked a little bit about wayfinding as well, but you're seeing the signs coming in uh, across the neighborhood, um, and you will see links there to the previous presentations we've done to the community board. So thank you all for that. Uh, more to come as we complete the project. I will scroll down. Uh, to the top of page nine. This is important only because as part of the ball fields resiliency project, and I noted this to you when it all happened in, uh, in August, um, for one stretch of the Hudson River bikeway right adjacent to the field, there is a shared bike lane. Uh, that's just for the duration of the project. 
before with that what that one block stretch uh, it's shared between both pedestrians and bicyclists because pedestrians can't be on the sidewalk while the construction is happening. It's all there in the report, a schematic, and then an actual visual of what the situation looks like on the ground. So thank you. Uh, BPC parks lawns, just as a reminder, we put this every month. They're obviously open. And then obviously what I have hyperlinked there is it's a dog's life in Battery Park City. We always try and link that trifold as well. It's in the chat. Thank you, Lucian, for that. It's also in the report. Keep it wild. Uh, we cover each month. Uh, but that's there as well. Uh, neighborhood policing, we have our NCOs, as we know, along with their contact information. Okay, uh, very quickly here, just wrapping up. Uh, programming is in full swing. Thank you to everyone who came and enjoyed the Battery Park City Back to School event last uh, Friday the 17th. It was hundreds of people. It was great. We had tug of war. We had baseball stations. We had basketball. We had recycling. It was a really fun event for the community. So thank you to everyone who attended. Uh, and following up on that, this past Saturday, we had the annual migration celebration, uh, music and fun festivities for everyone to come and enjoy nature. So there's some pictures there, uh, Lucian, at the top of uh, page 11. Um, <clears throat> and you're, this will all be online as well, so you can look at these at your leisure to the extent that you are so inclined. Uh, the bottom of page 11, uh, thank you to everyone. It's not often I get to put a picture that has Robin Forst in it, but this one does. And this was a picture of the great 9-11 community sunset gathering we had. Uh, Justine, I know, was there and played a, uh, a starring and prime role. So um, you want to talk about community, this, this was it. This was really um, just really appropriately toned, well attended. Um, and to the extent that you can use the word joyful or joyous on a day as sad as that, it was, it was a real joy to have the community there and celebrating and commemorating together all that we've been through. Uh, and how strong we are. Uh, so we were honored to partner with the Gateway Plaza 10 Association. On that. And I'd be remiss unless I thanked uh, Rosalie and the team from the GPTA Executive Board, uh, and Justine and Matt and Robin, uh, um, and a lot of the other folks who, uh, who had spoken there. So thank you for that. Let me um, let me okay. just jump in for a second, Nick, and say thank you know thank you to you and the Battery Park City Authority, and Parks for your terrific support of that event, which I think was very important for our community. So we thank you for partnering with us on that. Well, thank you. Thank, thank, and, thank and you. Thank you and BJ and your lovely family for attending the event. And it was just lovely. So no, ditto. Thank you. Well, thank you. That, that was really, really, uh, you know, a sad day, but a necessary day. And that all made all the better because we were together on it. So thank you. Um, just steaming through the rest of this year. So, as we know, last week was climate week. I'm not going to go through all of it now, but it's all linked in the report. We did um, some fairly substantial blog posts over the course of the week, highlighting the different topic areas in the Battery Park City sustainability plan in the areas of energy and water, materials and site and waste, all ways that we are contributing to together uh, make Battery Park City a more sustainable. Uh, neighborhood, obviously, with the water is the resiliency projects, but materials in site with composting um, and recycling uh, site with the bees and with the uh, responsible transportation options, including get there green, um, etc. So wrapping up here, we wait, I'm going to do one second to say to Lucian and to you, yes. let's make a point of talking about local law 97 and what the authority is doing with the buildings with local law 97. Yeah, if you want to do that either next yeah. or maybe not next month because it's next week, but maybe in November or so we can have our yeah. sustainability team come in. I think that would make a lot of sense. I think um, that would be yeah. good. Oh, and can I ask you something else, which which again, I know it's short notice, but maybe you can do it because it's been done before. At the at Go the ahead. at the October meeting, what I would love to have you do or BJ do or Pam do um is do another explanation of the 2020, not not the 2021, I know it's not done yet, but the 2020 finances. Of the Battery Park City Authority, just because I've gotten so many questions from so many different people who don't understand how the ground rent works, how the mm -hmm. it works, what happens, and and I don't know. I, as BJ says, you know what, you and I both can do this in our sleep now at this point, but it's not appropriate for me. If you can do it, great. Um, I'll hold you accountable because I know the answer to the questions. <laughs> but you do. Yeah, I do. But but. Um, Whatever, if it's something that you could possibly think about, let's talk about it with Lucian. But that, but even more than that is local law 97 to get some information about that because 
so many buildings in this neighborhood um, have a D rating, and so many buildings across the city <laughs> have a D rating, which is not right. good. So yeah, how we fix okay. that and w what is entailed in that, it just I think would be helpful. Okay. Yes, let's let's connect. I don't I don't know that I can do it for next week, no, but exactly. we'll put it on the we'll put it on the agenda. We'll, we'll, we'll put it on the running list of topics. Thank you. Uh, so, so thank you. Um, okay, really quick. This was a really nice example of community um, collaboration there at the bottom of page uh, thirteen. There, I can't believe it's thirteen pages, um, but we got a nice little note from Marianne Braverman saying, "Hey Nick, some of the seniors who are in the small dog run next to West Ham, see how much time we spend on dogs? You wouldn't believe it." Can we put some more benches in the small end of the West Thames dog run? So yes, easy enough. Again, oh, I have another small. really weird thing to tell you, and I'm not okay. a I'm not a dog run. Um, even though I have dogs, my dogs are not social with dogs. They like people, so I don't go to the dog runs. But I was getting some emails from people who were complaining about the, which I just find shocking. But I have no information. That, Go ahead. that that the dog runs needed to be upgraded and both in the north and the south that that the, the there was cracks in the sidewalk and I don't know what they wanted. And I know that in years past, so much effort and energy was put into with Jeff being involved and, and, and Paula and, and the dog dog association, um, how to have the proper um, color of the of the surface so it doesn't burn the dog's feet and all this all yeah. this stuff went into it i just don't know where we are with it and and i guess don't answer me now put that okay. in, make a note of it and and either report back in november uh october or november and let me know what's going on because this is this is great i love that they have that they have seats and that's this is this is all love yeah i mean it was an easy enough thing to do but again that's an example where i just i shoot bruno Camponio an email and then he's like, yeah, we'll put some benches in there. Not a big deal because, you know, people want to sit down and, and then the small dog run, it's an easy enough thing to do. So we have them in the large dog run. We added some in the small dog run. Uh, yeah, and I can I'll get with Jeff and get some of the history there. I think some of it predates me, but as we know, we uh, we have the three dog runs are pretty large and, um, you know, repairs to things that are there now, I certainly think are within the realm of what we'd want to do. If we're talking about remodeling them, I think we'll talk about yeah, fatigue. I don't want to spend more money, some, but repairs if they're there may, right. There may be some construction fatigue, especially since we just opened up that area in front of the dog run after the bridge came down. So I don't know that we want to remodel them or redo them, but fixing them repairs certainly within the realm of what we want to do. So, which uh, again, I would think that you're on it. So that's why I was surprised yeah. to hear it. Yeah, so yeah. I'll, I put I'll, it out I'll, there. I'll, that was it for the most part. Community a couple of community reminders here, obviously, about the Oculus overnight closures, community composting. The one thing I would draw your attention to on the last page, page 15. Um, board meetings, uh, we sent out a notice today, but the, the meeting on Thursday is just for the audit committee. It's not the full board. The next full board meeting is October 20th. Again, these dates are subject to change, but we have three left October, November, December. And then the first precinct community council for folks who are. Uh, have public safety or quality of life concerns and want to contact um, the principals in the first precinct. Every month they do a what's known as a first precinct community council meeting. It will be by a Zoom. Once I have that link, I will send it to you, but just mark your calendars. It's Thursday night. I know it's opposite the full board meeting, so sorry, but yeah. we'll let you know. Uh, and then the last thing is Tammy had asked that we, when we start having them and we're starting to have them again, uh, upcoming permitted walks and runs, that's at the middle of page uh, 15 there in blue. Uh, three upcoming ones, um, bike to the beach, MDS foundation, and uh, a walkathon. But that is uh, that is coming up. That's at the bot, the middle of page fifteen there. Um, okay. That's yeah. it. We did we did the quality of life. We did the BPCA Allied Ambassador report earlier. Yes, we did, which was great. Um, on the on the PDF, which upsets me, but we'll fix it in post. No, no, that's fine. You're so funny. That's fine. And Lucian, if you're there, you scroll down because people are stuck at page fourteen on the screen. There you yes. Go. Um, yeah. What's the Oculus closures overnight? Why is that happening? I heard, I I That's heard. a World Trade Center campus question, but I think it's probably, I don't want to speculate. It may be because of different staffing needs over, overnight. Um, oh, it's still okay. open. It's still open. It's just one of the entrances is, uh, uh, it's limited, limited access. And is the PATH train running at night? It is, right or not? I don't even know. I haven't had the opportunity or need to go to Jersey City. <laughs> I believe so. You know the link there, the World Trade Center campus update. It'll tell you. Okay. And they, and they actually tweet that out every day as well. I just, I started putting it in and I and I kept it in there so, so folks were aware of what's happening mm -hmm. um, over the course of the uh, 
uh, the pandemic. Okay. And okay. then um, I think and that's, that's it. it. Sorry, that's more, it. but I would, you know. No, no, thank you. Um, and okay, cool. So I think our last, thank you very much. I think it was more than 10 minutes, but you know what? I was interested the whole time. So well, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> how's that? <laughs> Justine, there are a bunch I of like, hands up, but do you mind? I had a question of Nick. Oh, yes, please. I, I have a question as well. Oh, yes, there are other people. I don't want to. You. Yes. You know, let me do Kathy first, Betty, and then, but thank you for piping up. I didn't see it. Kathy, Betty, and then Jeff. Uh, Quick, Nick, um, I just want, when you come back next week, could you give us a little update on what might be going on with Halloween celebrations for the kids and the community? I don't know what's safe to do this year, or what some place like Brookfield is planning to do, but. Uh, um, I can find out, or, you know, I just ask, I can ask Brookfield or whatever else, what they're, what, yeah, what they're. Thanks, okay, and um, this is quirky, but it may be fun. Um, Every single basil plant in the community garden disappeared this year. Huh. Or has it that it's a bird, a particular type of bird that likes basil? So if Parks Court knows anything, we'd love to know <laughs> what's going on. Oh, funny. I can't say I stole the basil. <laughs> yeah, well, we thought it was okay. like rats, bugs, whatever. It's a bird, you know, but oh, how funny. Oh how I will get I, I will get a basil update from the community garden. Yeah, um, you know, not the, the yeah, but the parks court needs to. Yeah, I'll ask. I'll ask Ryan or the or experts on wildlife. Them. Yeah. And and Kathy, I guess that's a good point about the Halloween because in Battery Park City, um, we used to have a hollow. Well, maybe we still do have a Halloween list. I think that you know where people would sign up in each building, and I think that Robin. Um, well, let me give Nick a heads up and you a heads up on this. Um, Rumor went around a few years ago that the Battery Park City Authority organized the trick or treating for Gateway. It's not actually yeah. true. It started right. when I was 37 Thank years you. when my son was a year old, and there was a parents group that did it. Yes. Did going for about 15 years. But then, like, new people had to take over. I'm a grandmother, you know, and. Um, and that's what I was going to to ask Robin yes. what the GPTA is doing because yeah I, I always assumed it was the battery company that's already two for years as I took advantage of yeah. the children for, again it's, almost it yeah hasn't, it hasn't been GPTA but no. it is a um you know within well within Battery Park City I think last year there was actually trick or treating but let me see what I can find out and report back next week. Thanks, this Robin. Is, this is really helpful. Thank you, Robin. Uh, and Kathy, thank you, and Justine. Because every year around Halloween, I get these emails from people who are like, damn you for stopping it. And I was like, I didn't even know it what it you, is. It wasn't you, it was a volunteer who moved. I think the person right. who, who was doing it for years and years just said, I can't, I can remember those yeah. couple years where they just said. Okay, it wasn't me, I didn't tell you. It, it was a little rocky last year. It was also the pandemic. pandemic. Right. Uh, but, you know, um, I'm gonna check and see what I can Thank find you. out. Thank you, sorry All to right. dump that on you, Robin, but to, yeah. To the extent that it does happen and there's something we can help spread the word about, Happy to do it through all the channels we have. I think it's great. Thank you. Kathy, thank you. were you done? I'm sorry. I'm done. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. Betty, thank Betty. you so much. And again, Betty, thank you for Poppy piping up because I wasn't thinking. I'm sorry. Well, that's fine. I have two comments. One, Nick, I want to say the wayfinding signs I've seen so far are very good. Uh, I'm delighted with them. And in fact, even from my very low eye level, I'm not having trouble reading them near the time. Did you hear me? No, you were echoing, yeah, Betty. Echoing. Yeah, a little bit of an echo, Ed, uh, Betty. Can't tell you why. Um, there you go. It's better now. I didn't do anything. I, I had to mute some microphones. Okay. Thanks. Uh, anyway, the signs so far have been good, and from my height is the point that I'm bringing up. So that's been working so well, and I will look out as other ones get installed. But I was wondering if anyone has spoken to people from the visually impaired population. My bigger concern about them is one, are they even aware they're installed? I don't know how they know where to look for signs, but also things like bathrooms are things that may be more critical. It'd be interesting to know from them what would be the most critical thing. Really but good point. 
I know there are some residents who have asked for accessible pedestrian uh, signals to go into lights. So they're around Rector Street and they cross at Albany Street. Yep. So I know there are people down there who have specifically asked besides Anne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with you. So that's the kind of accessible, that's the kind of inclusionary questioning to ask when things are being done. Uh, as far as another point, which I want to know what is going on all of a sudden. I notice if I go do composting or something, I travel along Rockefeller Park or the north side of River Terrace. And every time I go out, I, there are, Transportation Committee is very much pedestrian priority on sidewalks and, and in public places. I see four to five trucks on the sidewalk or on the pathways, which are hard to squeeze by. It's like, where are they all of a sudden coming from all the time? And also people out watering the sidewalk. So they have these, uh, the hoses. Uh, and you can't the over the hoses. That which again, are very unstable for me to go over. So I, I mean, I can get around it. I just go out into the street and I use the street instead when I see those things. But it's like, where are all these things coming from all of a sudden? I'm seeing four to six trucks every time what I go out. Steady? Like the, 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 the little little paper paper party truck things or, or pan trucks or like blocking the sidewalk for packages? No, they're moving. I mean, they, they're with workers in them and they're driving along the sidewalk or they're driving along the path huh. that runs just uh, east of Rockefeller Place. Whichever path I'm going on, they happen to be on the same path. Um, but I'm just amazed how often I, I'm just going over to Chamber Street. That's a two block distance. I'm hitting four to six of them in a trip. Huh. What is this between like two and three thirty in the afternoon? That, which is when the kids are getting out of school time too. It's like, I, I don't know what's. Nick, anything to add to that or, or maybe look into Something it? Something to look into. Yeah. 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 It, it, uh, so these, just to be clear, but right? these are our trucks. These are, these are parks operations trucks. The. Uh... Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, and so they're little, they take up almost the whole sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. They're little and they fit on the sidewalk, but why don't they ever just use the street? Why am I using the street? And they're oh, using the I sidewalk? see. Yeah. I, you know, I don't think that they. And they're not it's operating the allowed, industry, right? Because they're not, they're not motor vehicles in the sense where they are kind of licensed with through DMV, I think. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, if it's something that is clogging traffic, we don't want that. So I'll ask them and find out if there's a particular reason why at that time of day there's so many. I mean, they have to go out at some point. But I think the reason why they don't use the street is I don't think they can, except if you're crossing the street, I don't think you can ride in the street. But I can check because okay, I'm not saying they aren't being considerate. I mean, we'll try to hit a point where they can pull over or I can pull over and then right, right, nevertheless, right, right, right. it's it's kind of crazy that I can't use a sidewalk. I count on using right. the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank okay. you for speaking to it, Nick. Yeah, sure. You're good? Yes, thanks. Jeff, you're up. Okay, speaking of Halloween, Nick. Uh, dog costume Halloween parade. We're still waiting for our permit. Okay. Uh, okay. No issue there, I hope. No, 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 no okay. issue. Um, uh, no, I will ask him to call you tomorrow. Okay. And for everybody else, we're going to be having the annual I love it. Halloween love it. costume parade October 30th, permit permitting. Permit so. permitting. I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, very good. And Halloween, yes, I forgot. Jeez, it's already almost October. All right, anybody else? Anything? Please pipe up because I'm looking now. Allison in the chat, is that just your hand left up? Allison, do you want to say something about anything? No, I, that was from before. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, I have a quick question. Um, Nick, thank you for sending uh, that information about the road closures and uh, for the tunnel to towers. And I know we're going to talk about that at the next meeting, but yes. does the community board still send? I haven't noticed, but maybe I'm missing them notifications for major events for road closures. Uh, that would be Lucian. I don't know. They always yeah, used to. I haven't noticed it either, but at least not for this, but 
I mean, this is a big development that are not connected to a very, very, very large event that we've been talking about for a while. Um, but there's some that were like Con Ed will say, well, we're going to close down, you know, these streets and we're giving you a couple of days notice because we, we always push out when we get them. But, but something like the tunnel to towers run or what used to be called the, the wall street, whatever that was Same called the, the run those, you know, really large scale or the, uh, 9-11 memorial walk i mean things that that connect you know certain neighborhoods more than just local battery park city i mean this was a huge impact on west street which was closed for hours and hours and it impacted you know multiple neighborhoods including phi die and battery park city so i i mean i would like to see that again if that's possible i don't know when where or when that stopped but that should come opens. through Notify New York. Who's speaking? Mariama. That should come through Notify New York City. You get an email from the city. I, I understand, uh, but usually Community Board 1 used to notify Community Board 1 locales. Indeed. About yes. local. Notify yes. NYC yeah. does not necessarily get into that level of detail because the city's too big. So anyway, just... I'm putting it out there. I don't know if it's something that um, the executive committee wants to think about or somebody wants to think about, but I'm just throwing it out as something. Well, I think I can give you an answer on that one. The street activity permit office is uh, not working until the end of 2022. So things are being done in an atypical fashion from what New York City typically does. because. They would normally come through the transportation committee and before that quality of life. Oh, interesting. And so then that we, we would know from that reasoning, because it'd be relevant to Battery Park City. You'd say Battery Park City, it's well, relevant to Fox and Rebecca. Right, but they had come to quality of life and notified us that everything would be coming from the city. And I do receive things like that. Like they say, there's going to be noise, there's going to be fireworks, there's going to be this, there's going to be that. It all comes from Notify New York City, not the board. And, and Interesting. Yeah, no, Notify my New district, York. Yeah, that, my, my that text app, right? Part of the district. Yeah. So something else since you're to bring in this up or bringing up noise or something, and I'm not sure, it's just a thing here to say it. The past few days, I mean, you know, up to... 9-11, but then since, it's just been this cacophony of sounds of fire engines, sirens, uh, the, the, the motorcycles revving their engines. Helicopters. Helicopters, oh, yes. Right. I mean, a lot of stuff going on. And, and you know, the motorcyclers, I don't know that we can control, but maybe the fire trucks and the, and the police, if there's no, if they're not going to any emergency, but they're just sounding off. I don't know what we can do, but who can we talk to? But I would throw that out to you because it's so in, in the month of September, it's extremely stressful. Justine, um, one and and Nick also, um, we've we hear complaints in Gateway, but I'm sure it's a problem throughout parts of Battery Park City, particularly the south end of you know, it's kind of cars racing at night at high speeds, very very loud. I don't know if. Um, you know, our team can, uh, can we get maybe about that or maybe with the first precinct, yeah. of, you know, occasional patrols because it's really, really, I mean, aside from being loud and annoying, it's also really dangerous yeah. to be traveling yeah. at very high speeds in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Cause yeah, they'll so stop going on for months. months and Patrick and Murphy. Uh, Hi, Patrick. How are you? I can tell you that they got a speed camera. On yeah, the, uh, over by That's the bridge, up. that traffic light. West Ham. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it go off several times. So okay. if it's any consolation, you know they're getting a ticket in the mail. So well, yeah, it's it also South Ham where they're doing it. No, this is West Street. So West Street at, at West Ham. Oh. There's, there's a. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I think within Battery Park City, it's, uh, you yeah, know, it's just South End Avenue. Yeah. Hazard to pedestrians, especially at night, which is when they're doing it. So I don't know if there's anything to be done to try to let people know they're being watched and maybe curb their behavior. I don't know if that's possible, but maybe Nick at the next, um, you know, uh, 
first precinct local yeah. discussion, which would have been appropriate last week, but I had a conflict. I would have joined the meeting, but that's something to bring up if they can occasionally 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you know, post a police car for a half hour here and there. Yes, I can, I can bring it up and I'll, I'll talk to officer Nelson as well. Let me just make sure that I have. Right. It. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's yeah. It's it, uh, Kathleen, you must hear all the gateway people must hear it. Yeah, uh, I it's, because it's not just gateway. Yeah, it's, we it's, all hear it. It's the whole strip. It's, it's all the whole way strip. Down. I mean, I'm just saying gateway because we have the tenants associations <laughs> hear about it. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, they're going down South End, maybe from Liberty it's to Liberty, as they far turn as they down go. West Thames Street, so they probably go, go, and they probably go down Battery Place too, for that matter. Wow, they could be nice long stretch. Anyway, that's all. They Thank could you. be in that. It, was that? it wasn't cars though; it was these bikes, these like yes, motorbikes. Bikes bikes. And I've seen like the same, at least the same looking yeah. type of people, groups of people mm -hmm. coming like the wrong way on my side, like the wrong way down Park Row. Um, so oh you're coming, yeah, you're you're coming from off um, around Chamber Street, and they're coming like you know towards you, and I'm down a one way street. But I, I've seen it on West Street many times, and I actually called the police a few times when I when I witnessed yeah. it. But <laughs> it's too fast to catch the license plate though. Right, and these these are generally cars, you know, like we used so to call them like suit up cars. I don't know what they're called yes. anymore. But, yeah. You know, no so mufflers. Yeah, like drag racing. racing. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes they'll have like they have uh, these crazy. Um, like I, I, at some point, I have seen them rev up, and then like sparks and fire shoots out of their tailpipes, which is mm -hmm. how something that's cool. I don't know, but people it happens. Problems. People with problems. People with problems. City council is hearing a bill to try to make that illegal. It is not illegal no. at this point in New York City. No, it just would be nice to have city council now. Do here, yeah. But again, it's also those are the kind of crimes that it's like, ugh, or kind of incidences that. It's a it's balance a quality of life and safety, really. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is, and and it's it's distressing. Anyhow, sorry to. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate no, it, Rob. This, 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 you know, this is this is helpful. What I would say is not to make more work for everyone, but it's easy enough. Just, uh, just shoot me an email if and when you're seeing these things. Just put it on the chain. Um, and then we can just at least continue to track because, as Betty notes, if it's not illegal now, I think the answer will be. Sorry, it that'll... needs to be, but if it sometime at some point becomes it, it would be helpful to have. It would be helpful to have the data anyway for mm -hmm. the stuff. That's not illegal if it does become, but the stuff that they're doing that may already be illegal. It's also helpful to have the data either way. So we can, so we can get that over to the first. Like it's reckless or keep a running tally driving at high speeds. When. It's illegal. Yeah, whether that's, that's, or not that's sparks way. flying is illegal. I don't know. Right. right. 25 miles an hour is the law, is the law, of the, law, of the, law of the land, or law of the city at least. So to the extent that we have it, send it to me. We'll get it for the okay. first person, at least Fair we can enough. track okay. it. And they can focus resources as they have them on the, the spots that are problematic. Yeah, just, yeah. I don't know, you know, I, sure it's not possible to have, you know, full time, but spot checking, I think helps. I think the police presence can help curb that so to ride through yeah exactly just just to be around because it's a deterrent I, I don't necessarily need people to be ticketed or arrested or anything like that i just need them but to right stop. now they come here because they know they can it can yes. exactly sarah exactly yeah and so making it so it's not this is also a place where they can't come that's good because this is not this is not like essential behavior that they're behaving they're going in right but again i don't want too much craziness either but all right so the only thing left on our agenda is capital expense and budget items. So Lucian, if you bring us to that website again, and um, how are we doing this? As I guess next month we have to talk about it in real detail and come up with suggestions. Yeah, I would say that you know this committee I think should be aware of the process. Though I think not, typically yeah. you all really aren't expected to generate too much uh, okay. uh, fodder for for this process um that isn't to say that you're that you're not encouraged to, to think big about what city agencies um need to spend money money on uh, with relation to battery park city to improve quality of life um mm -hmm. this could be a good opportunity to 
to to send the question kind of back over to Nick and the BPCA and say, you know, what are some things that the authority would like to see from the city in terms of capital expenditure or uh, expense budget expenditure? Um, I think that's probably something a uh, direction we haven't gone before. Not to, I haven't I haven't told Nick I would say that. I just kind of thought of it right now. So don't mean to, to surprise that on you, Nick. But it would be interesting to hear your your you know the, the authorities. Um, you know, perspective on where the city monies could be employed to improve both the outcomes for the the authorities uh, initiatives and just generally the, the the good the good running of, of of the neighborhood. Okay. Well, thank you, Lucian. I appreciate it. Yeah, and if you, I don't expect you to have an answer right now, but maybe next week. Uh, which is next week, next month, next week. Um, yeah. Maybe have some ideas because. Um, I have to look through, through the website again to see what we came up with last year, but you know, what comes to mind as to city needs affordability. Um, yep. Bathrooms, public bathrooms, um, you know, those are, those are the 2 big things and, and which. I don't know what else, but those 2 just to what stick in my head. Yeah, and Justine, I think, I think just for like the, the, the bigger picture of this process, you know, I don't, you know, I, I don't think that this committee is necessarily going to. Be a big generator of items, and and I don't think that even um, there's any pressure, Nick, for you to come back even in a week. But I think that maybe over this next year, we could we could keep strengthening this process by having the authority, you know, maybe put together a more formal kind of comment on what agencies are falling short on um, for the city. You know, um, being that you're a completely different part of government. Um, yeah. yeah. And, no, and, and you know, to the degree that you're comfortable saying so, uh, you know, it's it's helpful. So let, let me give it some thought. And again, I wouldn't necessarily even say that it's it's falling short. It's just you know things that you identify. As like, a new for one. instance, the last topic we just discussed. Maybe there's an idea that based on the data that we can gather, maybe there's a need for some additional speed cameras in places that we know are hot spots for speeding mm -hmm. vehicles. I mean, that's a relatively straightforward proposition that we can. Uh, engage the OT on if that would make sense, or to Betty's point earlier, um, although it's not city needs, uh, state DOT presumably, or city in the areas where it applies for um, some audio capability as mm. people are crossing West Street, right? Right, that's um, a good idea. The, I think so we've asked like for that. that but those are smart, both smart things. Who controls the, the street light on um, um, uh, West, no, on Albany Street, is it? Who controls that? Is that state DOT, city DOT? I think that's already in the budget. It's there. Oh, it okay. okay, great. Yeah. But like, so it's it's maybe the speed camera, I'm saying. Do we've asked for that or not? And I'm just saying, let's just add that. The cameras have to be within a distance of a school, and the city has a system set up because they have a cap on how many they can install in the city of New York. The state controls the speed cameras. Uh, this. The DOT has a set schedule through the end of this year when they'll meet the 750 that the state legislature allows them to install in schools. They're not allowed to install them anywhere except within the distance of the schools. Hmm. And they're also not allowed to turn them on any hours that the state legislature does not allow them to turn them on. So, just right. the weekend, so, so they're not going to put them on at night. That's right. right. So that's a whole other agenda going on with the mayor has stepped forward and asked the state to please give the city the authority for how it does its own. Yeah, um, this is, it's a automatic price of ticketing. Right, there's this that makes sense. Right, the state does sense, control it. But, but yeah, I know, but yeah, I hear what you're saying. Thank you for that information, Betty. Right, so right now there are some DOT related items that I know are in the budget. Uh, the DOT paying its share of the capital expense for South End Avenue. Mm -hmm. Restore renovation and oh, that's nice. That's a great one. Yes, I know that's in there. I know some safety build out around the school on the south side, that 287. Um, that's on DOT's budget, and so is the accessible pedestrian signal. There are a few things already on for battery parks. They're there with the perspective with the respective committee. Good. It's appropriate. Right, right. So, which is transportation, certainly. But so they're but they've been raised. Thank you. Yeah. 
This is great. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, absolutely, Lucian. Let's let's connect and uh, we'll continue to brainstorm. But Betty, thank you for. Mm -hmm. You know more about transportation. You've already forgotten more about yeah. transportation than I'll ever learn. You know, so, you know exactly. Really so no, that's really useful. And Lucian, thank you for saying that. There's not much we have to come up with because I don't come <laughs> off the hook for the most part. But, but in the scheme of this issue and things. no, we're state. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you all. And I think I, is it fair to say we're done? Anybody have something to say? Pipe up if you got something to say. I, I move think to we adjourn. are done. Move to adjourn. Thank you. And I think, can I second that or does somebody else have to? Well, somebody I'm else have to. It. Thank you. Good night. Right. I think we are good. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to the volleyball.